Fredo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia. Brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck shit. What are you a fucking hoo? <laughs> this is Football Daft. You're a Rangers man. Aye. I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With you and Cameron. I work for Showtime in ESPN. <laughs> and. Be the top end of Stevenson. Grudo! Hello. Uh, wait a minute. Shouldn't it be encyclopedic brain? I he was murdered for that, Ewan. It's encyclopedic. Uh, aye. It's anyway, you and Cameron, our good pal, is still taking a, a little bit of time out from the podcast. He's not been sacked. Everyone keeps asking me that. Oh, has on he been Twitter. Sacked? No, he's not been right, sacked. Right, yeah, okay, okay. Do you not like him? Not to do with me. He's not been sacked though. Do you not like him? Is it like some high powered showbiz row? Every time I leave this building I say, Right, you and you're my best mate and he goes, Right, okay, bye. <laughs> and I go, But you're my best mate. Hi, I know. See you later. Bye. <laughs> oh no. I said, I love you. Aye. I get nothing back for him. Oh. Well I like him anyway. Fuck him. Anyway, um where were we? Well, oh foot- yes, hello! Football daft man, welcome back. Thank you very much. I am standing host David Tanner, two in a row. Aye, you're doing well mate. Why you're wearing an Arbroath FC tap? Because one of my best pals is Ricky Little and uh, I keep, oh, in the previous episodes I've called him the Arbroath captain and he was at my bit last week. He goes, Stop fucking saying I'm the captain, I'm not the captain. It's Bobby I'm Lynn. not the captain. Aye, he's gone, you're, you're giving me a red neck, I'm not the captain. So, so I apologise. Ricky isn't the captain, but he is the centre half. Great centre half. Brilliant result the weekend, David. Uh, they beat mm. Partick Thistle at Fur Hill, three one. Good result for the lefties, mm-hmm. um, and they've given me this tap for nothing. So I'm delighted because he was, he did ask for a tap for his uh, mm-hmm. his nephew, and he had to pay twenty five bar for it. I mean, he asked for it, and he, he got a big red was wanting a tap. And I got it for he ho. Now your tongue. How did you enjoy last week? I really enjoyed it. I thought Willow Flood was fantastic. And Stephen Doby, who's coming in shortly, Queen of the South legend, of course, he's got a really tough act to follow to be, to be better than uh, Willow last week. It was absolutely superb. And Nicholas McDonald, I couldn't believe how many stories there were in uh, the tabloid. Oh, we write the stories. That. We write the full fucking But they stories. missed the big story. What? The fact that he had a heart attack at 10, hit the deck, and the people at X Factor said to Louis Walsh, Louis, well, you're going to have to vote him off. Fiddle the competition. Have ITV never learned? By the way, guess who I met this week? Who? One of my heroes in broadcasting. Have a guess. Jenny McNee. Jenny McNee? No, 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 no. Jock, uh, who was the one that was at Celtic, the director of football? Jock Brown. Jock Brown. Close. Mm. You're really close. Right, Dougie Donnelly, I know you were kissing his hoop. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Dougie Donnelly. Let's see him. Where was he? There's your dinner. Dougie was hosting the Scottish Football Awards at Hampden Park. At the inductee dinner, Double D was there. He might have shaved. He's got a beard now. Oh, he's grown a beard, right? Aye. But I was so excited to see him. Um, I worked with him. No, that's case. good. I, I, I love the way you look up to that guy. I really like that. There you go. He's David is now showing a picture of Dougie Donnelly to the camera. <laughs> Who was inducted in this this Hall of Fame this week? In there, a great batch Steve actually. Dijkstra. Hearts. <laughs> Steve Dykstra missed out this oh. time. Um, but if there ever is a porn star. Looky likey Hall of Fame, he should be in it, along with Dirk Lehman. Dirk Lehman. From Hibs. See the Hibs goalie? No, he was a Hibs striker. Played with you at Motherwell as well. Who? Uh, Macalambi. Remember him? Hibs goalie? Eve Macalambi. Uh, he was. He was. He was, a, there was, that he was sequence all right. of Hibs goalies that were doing really well. And then Edinburgh Derby. Aye. Uh, throw one in the net. It was Mark Brown as well. He was. He played with Hibs, didn't he? Yeah. And played, Rangers and Celtic, yeah, Ross County, to play Ross County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he played in the 5-1 Cup final, didn't he, in 2012 uh, for Hibs. Oh, Hibs. did he? Unfortunate. Aye. Awkward. I felt he's a Polishman now, speaking of a Pol- Scottish squad. Really? I think I've heard that. I think It he could be wrong. I think, did he not right, did he? He was at Morton for a bit, and then he, he got some dream move to aye. the Middle East Also, the there's, East. there's a few uh, players I've been known to be called. Roddy McDonald. There. Right, aye. I, I, uh, sorry, Celtic and Hearts. I heard Scott Wilson, centre-half. Yeah, yes. I've seen him at Ibrox. He's got a big beard. You're joking, as a copper? Yeah. Roddy God. McDonald um, worked at uh, Ibrox as well. Really? Yep. And uh, Lex Bailey, ex Celtic. He was a Polish man at Hamilton. Kevin James. You're joking, the big centre half. Aye. You're kidding me stop. on as a copper. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop the tape. We need to fix that. It's big Kevin James. You can't <laughs> say Kevin James. It's got to be 
Big Kevin James. Oh, he was a... He's a postman. Aye. Aye, he wouldn't like being huggled after that. <laughs> Fucking big bastard. Oof. I know, think about it. There's also um, uh, Steve Clark's bl brother, Paul. He he played with Kelly. Uh, uh -huh. He was a copper and a dressing for years and years. I think he's just retired recently. So um, uh -huh. that's a weird, that's a kind of funny. And also, you know, speaking of um, Jobs, it's like my brother um, what's offshore and the amount of players he says, oh, you know, I was... I've show this week or this month with uh, Jim Hamilton. Jim Hamilton? What uh, team did he play for again? I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> what team, do, what team did he play team. for? Every fucking team. Every team. It's, it's surprising to hear um, the amount of players that go going to do stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, to answer your question of about 10 minutes ago, inducted into the Scottish Football Hall of Fame. What about these four legends? Hearts, John Robertson. Now oh, aye. Yes, Cali Thistle manager. Mm -hmm. Colin Steen, uh, Scotland's first £100,000 player between two Scottish clubs. Um, scored in the Rangers European Cup final. Cup final. Um, who else? Did you present us, David? Joy Harper. It was the Right. What were you doing there? I was there uh, drinking. Aye. Actually, I was, I was driving. I was drinking Coca-Cola. Oh, right. Okay. Um, who else was in it? Um, Patsy Gallagher, who died years ago, but his grandson, Kevin Gallagher, accepted the award. Oh, that's emotional. Any fisticuffs, any rollabouts, same day? No, but uh, Joe Harper was absolutely superb. Joe um, was being asked about his career, but he slipped into his after-dinner routine. It was absolutely superb. A stand-up? A yeah, stand-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd have been cool. talking about birds and shagging and all the uh, rest yeah. of it. And that's what you want, but isn't it? I'm not sure Doogie was looking for that, though. <laughs> Riddles <laughs> rant. My rant is this poor lassie that's been on EastEnders. She's been in the papers, yeah, basically the papers making a failure because she works in Lidl. And I don't think that should be a, a, a news article. They're taking the piss out of the lassie. The lassie's in between jobs. You know, you want the telly, nothing's ever guaranteed. Mm. There's nothing wrong with somebody going out to earn an extra couple of coins for, for their family. You know, Mm -hmm. I worked in the fire brigade for 10 years, right? And I used to day everybody's nothing because I always wanted Saturday and Sunday nights half for the wrestling. And at the start, it was all right. You know, for, oh, Gredo's needing an eight half for the wrestling. The novelty wore off, right? Mm -hmm. So eventually I had to get in the fire brigade because I had to keep doing my wrestling. But I always worked in the fire brigade and I had a balance. You listening? Not as if you're fucking falling asleep, David. No, no, I got a tweet there. Oh, did you? Was somebody in your booth? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I used to wrestle in Florida, get a flight back into Glasgow Central, into Glasgow Airport, get in at six in the morning. I'd sleep in the airport for two hours and then go and do a ten hour day shift in the fire brigade, then go and wrestle at night. Wow. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great people work, want it, you know what I'm saying? And it's and it'll be the same with football players as well. I mean I've got a stop off Ricky. Ricky works Monday to Friday. I don't see why this is this has to be put in the media where people need to be embarrassed about where they work and you know because they work in the telly. Because I'll tell you what, the money in telly is not what it was twenty years ago. You could probably tell it. You and your fucking mob back in the nineties, you all scuffed it in, didn't you? Yeah, the yeah, lot, he's yeah. Dead. He's and a Rolls Royce in the 1990s. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and a trans card for the buses. Correct. He's fucking, he's were all greedy bastards. <laughs> Barrymore. <laughs> fucking all them. They were all earning a million pound a night. No, let's fuck all. Can I tell you the best other job ever come across in football? And I've just remembered it there while you're talking, while you were ranting. It was a guy who played for our broth. And we were doing the game live, our broth Celtic, I think, in the Scottish Cup on Sky. And Kieran McInnesby, he was a good player, played for Sir Johnson and yeah. Fulham, I think. Kieran, by this point, was part-time with our broth. And you know what his other job was? What? He was the cameraman on Pornhub. Seriously? Yeah, or one no. of those... Aye, one of those um, sort of chat show... You know, this, what was it? What Wait, what, you, mean, you mean Babe Station? Babe Station, You're yeah. kidding me on? Yeah. You're joking? Yeah. That's fucking brilliant. Seriously, he was a cameraman. Yeah. There's no much to do in that. He just let in there and let the camera go because it's just painting at the one woman, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. You've got to keep yourself busy. You're I'm kidding sure. me on. You can someday. Yeah, fact, one of the guys. He him, he's a football player and he, that's what he's always a one cameraman. One of the guys, I'm sure it was Kieran McInnesby. That is class. Yeah. What a job. Yeah, yeah. Imagine fucking being the babe station cameraman. Would you look? Would I look? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh. So, let's look back to the weekend's games, Grado. <laughs> and to put this in context, we're recording this on Wednesday afternoon 
We've got games tonight, so we're not going to talk about those uh, midweek games, mainly because they've not been played yet. It would be stupid. Yes, it would be daft. But let's talk Killy. Moving up to third, Gary Dicker scoring back to back. Have they moved up to third, David? Have they? Gary Gary Dicker, they're scoring back to back games. I Uh, mean, that's like... That's like Haley's Comet arriving twice in a fortnight. Because <laughs> he's no scored in a while, isn't he? No? Oh, Apart before that. Years, yeah. You know, David, the problem with that game was when I was watching the highlights was the strips. It done my tits in. Kelly, I don't know why they weren't wearing their blue and white. They were in their navy. St. Murn were wearing purple. CT wear, watched that. Only telly. It would biff me out. I couldn't tell which team mm-hmm. was what. I mean, I think I've got not all right sight and vision, but it done my tits in. Mm-hmm. But I was happy for... Uh, Gordon Soyles, my mate, um, <laughs> Kelly fan. I uh, get three points. You, uh, that's um, that's him going to be a half. Alessio's back for a week at least. He was singing Alessio, Alessio on Facebook. I'll calm down. I prefer it when Kelly lose though, and your man's so yes. rant. To be honest yeah. with you, to be honest with you, I. But as I say, Kelly. Hopefully, well, nah, I'm not a Kelly fan. Fuck them. Now, Hibs two, Ross County two. Great recovery by County from there. Pogering at Celtic Park, but any chance Hibs can win a game? Oh, come on, man. Hibs, I mean, they're up 2-0. Uh, What's the boy Cam Berry? Missed a couple of sitters near the, mm-hmm. bef- before um, County uh, sc- scored. I, I just, I couldn't believe watching them going, they're 2-0 up. Come on, hold on. Surely you want to hold on. And they lose two goals in the last 15 minutes. Just watching them, the way they just sat off. Ross County thinking that the game is over. Shocking, I'd be raging if I was second bottom. Or as uh, Craig Beatty said on Clyde at the weekend, Paul's second bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, How that, many that was a good part for Craig Beatty. <laughs> uh, no wins in five for Hibs as of Saturday gone by. Which team is a point off the foot of the Scottish Premiership? Pop quiz. A foot off the bottom? Yeah. A point off the bottom? <clears throat> is it Hearts, no? Yeah. Is it? That's awful. Hearts nil, Livingston nil. And I can tell you the scoreline flattered the game. Mm, <laughs> uh, again, what I've seen, Ipiachu. Is it Ipiachu? Ipiachu. Is that like Ipiachu? Ipiachu, I missed an <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is why everyone tunes into this <laughs> podcast for moments like that. Well, Ipiachu. Missed an absolute sitter, absolute sitter. And I can tell you the Hearts fans were not happy at full time. Mm. Yeah, the Hearts players were getting absolutely ticked. And neither was Craig Levian. Now, <laughs> for me, performance of the weekend with respect to Celtic, Bath and Aberdeen, St. Johnson. St. Johnson. Not only getting their first win of the season, but scoring three goals mm-hmm. against Ham. I'm so happy because we had that Mr. Angry from Perth for in last week. Or we had Mr. Angry from. I'm so happy because we had Mr. Angry from Perth tweeting us last week saying that Tommy should go. And to that fella, I say, as I said last week, <laughs> <laughs> I get it up you. Well, St. Johnson. <laughs> I think again, was it no two each? It was it no two all? And then eventually. Yeah. And whose son scored the winning goal? Whose son scored the winning goal? I'll give you a clue. Braveheart. Mel Gibson. <laughs> hey, it was Colin Hendry's laddie Callum. Was it honestly? Yeah, yeah. So a big, uh, big Hendo on Twitter and on Facebook was uh, was posting that. So really pleased for him. Um, Rangers two, Motherwell one. Rangers were shite in the first half. Oh, the Rangers were shite. Shite in the first half. Uh, although uh, there was a couple of penalty claims in the first half. I think one of them uh was justified the penalty was definitely justified there was a commentator i listened to the weekend who in the replay said nothing in that absolute bollocks <laughs> it was a sh- as we call in the wrestling it was a sh- it was a shoulder tackle no. anywhere on the part that's a free kick for that comment yeah. for that commentator to say it wasn't a penalty absolute disgrace now remind me when we were doing our scoreline predictions last week. Remind me who was it that said Aberdeen nil, Celtic four? I'll give you a clue. It was his first appearance on this program as guest host. Oh, was it you? Did you say that? Yes. Well done, mate. Well, I didn't see that coming. Did I win anything for that, uh, producer John? No, you can't win anything. Eh, uh, what I will say about that is uh, the Celtic player fr- from from Prong, <laughs> from Prong. <laughs> what's his name? 
He yeah. looks a player, and he's Jeremy only eighteen year old. Tom, aye, he's only eighteen year old. David, if you watched, did you see the game? Yeah, he played outstanding. Absolute. If I was a Celtic yeah, fan, perfect. I'd be really excited and about him. Assisting the goal for him, right? And oh, if it wasn't for Joe Lewis, it would have been a lot more. He's a really, he's an underrated keeper for me, uh, Tanner. I would, um, I'd say he could get a move for Aberdeen somewhere. Can I just say, uh, Aberdeen fans will kill you for that? No, I know they will. They will. They, they will. They will. The captain. Yeah, no, he's a t- he's a terrific player. He's a he's a great great player. Um, what about? Odson Edwards goal. I mean, the touch from James Forrest, Ayrshireman, like yourself. Mm-hmm. Aye, another great goal. Edward, great striker. What a week for Celtic, though. If this league is going to be decided on goal difference, this week, the two mm. back-to-back Saturdays there, 10 nil in aggregate. I know, it's snowing. You know? Aye. So, just saying. So, the league's over. That's it. <laughs> All that's right. it for the season. Good night. You know that's going to be the headlines in the sun next couple of days. David Tanner says the league's over. <laughs> it's the most sensible thing I've said today. So we've got some reaction from social media on last week's games. We've got some here noted down. I've got Isabel Braidwood. Time Tav was removed from the Rangers team and taking off spot kicks and armband. I think that's <laughs> a bit harsh. Isabel's no messing about, is she? That, See, I, that, that annoys Bella me. Bella come on. That annoys me eyes up. Um, you know, it's like Bang! 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 It's like she's hit him with the triple whammy. I d- Cam, Doon. Cam Doon. Support your captain. That's what I'm saying. And Gerard said at the end of the game, he needs support. Um, a lot of people were saying that the Rangers fans were booing Tav. The Rangers fans were only booing Tav. There was the Motherwell fans who thought that Tav had dived in the box for the penalty. Um, mm-hmm. with, with regards to the penalty kicks, I they agree with that. I think I don't see why he needs to take every penalty when there's Jermaine Defoe in the part, Tanner. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's decent. why can't he step up Half and have a go? Um, but as I say, the armband and dropping them. You somebody, I don't know if it was you that had a go at me, but somebody had a go at me saying, you know, he needs a rest. I think he'd, mate, he's playing every game. You know, Gerard said something in an interview that interested me. He said that, um, they don't have enough cover there. Flanagan's carrying a bit of an injury, which seems to me that the that he doesn't rate Poster highly because he never mentioned Poster, which is surprising. So I've heard he's had a couple of good games. I had a couple of pals that went to some uh, a Rangers reserve game against Chelsea because uh, mm-hmm. we Billy was playing. I also shout out to be Billy again who was on the bench last week. Billy Gilmer. Yep. Uh, uh, aye. So. And Stevie also save says Tav one hundred percent needs taking out the penalty pressuring firing line. I mean, to be honest with you, maybe he does, because at the end of the day, we've got Morelos and we've got uh, Defoe there. Greg Schurt, Schurt could take a penalty. <coughs> There's a fair few there. Matthew Inkster, who I think is a Dons fan, has texted, uh, tweeted us and said, uh, his job is safe, but cheerio McInnes, and a wee wave emoji. His ineptitude against the OF, old firm, is plain to see. No guts, no glory. Although, if he goes, we're going to take three steps back like after Calderwood left. How? So, mm, uh, listen, Derek McInnes has had to rebuild that team every year for the last three years. Um, this year, it's been tougher. But I tell you what, Celtic and Rangers are better this year. No, that's true. So, you know, and key signings haven't played as much as it would have liked I think it's just you know I, I just think it's knee jerk I really do but do you think there's going to come to a point David where the Aberdeen fans are finally going to turn on event- or should I say eventually turn on McInnes do you, can, can you well, see that happen? I mean if Matthew's a Dons fan he already has mm-hmm. uh, but, but there's I no many of them I don't think David I don't think there's many of them no I think I think more sensible but I mean listen when you get gubbed 4-0 at home um, by Celtic then you know you're, you're going to get hacked off I get that. Aberdeen were really, really, really bad in that first half. Now, it's not taking nothing away for Celtic. Say Celtic played great. Uh, but yeah, the Derek, thank but Craig, Craig Bryson, for example. Terrific signing from Derby County. He's hardly played. He's been injured, you know. And yeah. I, I think if he plays, they're a different team. Mm, Devlin. I'm not a fan of him. Mikey Devlin. Mm. Oh, I like him. I like him. In the Scotland squad. Anyway. Uh, who's next? Matt Reed. Matt Reed. Hecking Bottom needs to go. We could be bought by 10 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, that's true. And there is no word from the board. If Livy beat us, hate to think what Celtic will do at Hamden. So here's the thing. Hearts and Hibs fans are saying to sack the managers, their respective managers, in the week of the Betfred Cup finals at Hamden Park. 
That is the definition of pure mental. But that's but, but the thing is, David, right? This, the, the, the issue I've got with you saying that is, for what I gather, you don't support a team. Mm-hmm. You don't have a team with the, 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 you, that you love and that you go Scotland. and follow. Right, okay, right. Although but I'm what I'm saying is... Love is being tested. But what I'm saying is, you don't have the same passion. You don't hurt the same as when these people, when these mm-hmm. people's teams lose. So Very I don't true. think you... I, un- I, I wish I understand that, but sometimes it's over the top. Aye, it's over the top, but can you understand what I'm coming for? People yeah. like you are not to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Would you accept a lift from me, John? Yes, of course, David. You fool. <laughs> what are you fumbling with down there? My vape. Sorry, I know it's unprofessional having it in this. Uh, I wonder what it was. Studio because I'm, I've been barred for using it in the office flare because everybody mm-hmm. else has been barred. But the thing is, I was in 40 now today, Davey. So my girlfriend got oh. me a vape. Aye, man, it's bad, 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 bad. She's got me a vape. Well, last week I was ranting and raving about not being able to get my vape in Paisley, if you remember. Mm. So the nice people at VPZ have been in touch to let us know that the store has moved the Piazza Centre to the high street. <laughs> Oh, really? Thanks for letting us know. They've got over 125 stores across the country and one of the fastest growing companies in Scotland with 300 stores planned by the end of 2021. I've got one in Sulkets I was doing there yesterday. Now, if you're thinking of jacking in the fags, mm-hmm. you're thinking about going to Vatem, you've got a money back guarantee on the Inokin T18E bundle. So what that means is you get the vape and you get five 10 milliliter e-liquids, which is perfect for making a switch. That's what I've done. And get this, Tanner boy. MD that goes into the store between the 1st and 3rd of November and says the word, Greedo! Yep. We'll get an extra 10 milliliter e-liquid with our in-store purchase. So you're just going to show up and say, Greedo, and they'll give you an extra wee bottle. <laughs> Greedo? Aye, so do that. So head along to VBZ now and say, Grado. To get an extra 10 milliliter e liquid with your purchase, check out your nearest store at vpz.co.uk. Stores where you will find the terms and conditions. And I just want to say that since going to vaping, I've tried going to other shops to vape. I've limited my, my tobacco, my nicotine, so I'm trying to get that done all together so it's just juice that's in it. And I must admit, the VPZ stuff is the best. Not that you give a fuck, but that is better. Who are you? Who are you? So, still to come, Stephen Doby, a veteran of the football world, but we're joined now for Who Are You by a man who's double his age, <laughs> a veteran in my line of work, the broadcasting game, and that is Sir Hugh Keevans. <laughs> Hugh. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too as well. Um, how this works then is this big hairy wrestler, Grado, comes in blindfolded, uh-huh. and has to guess who you are. Yeah. Now, we've asked him to wash his hands yeah. and to heat them up a bit, but they're maybe touching. Are you okay with that? I spent my teenage years in drum chapel. <laughs> I'm used to grappling of all sorts. I hate to think, I was wondering where you were going to go with that. <laughs> I thought you were going to take us to the Locarno I, or the Barrowland of a Saturday had a, night in the 1920s. I've not had a delicate upbringing. Born in Partick, teenage years in drum chapel, Married years in Clyde Bank. There's no silver spoon to be found anywhere. <laughs> Where are you going to retire to then, Largs? Somewhere posh? Uh, I'd like to think somewhere warm. You know, maybe Troon or... I grew up. Listen, when you were growing up in those places, mm. I'm thinking that the list of towns you named there, um, I'm thinking Billy Connolly. Yeah, similar. I went to the same school as Billy, St. Uh-huh. Peter's Primary School. At the party. same time? Uh, he was in the last year. Uh, and I was in the first year, he was in my cousin's class, uh, and then they went off to St. Gerald's Secondary School in Dublin. Uh-huh. Were you aware of him then? Uh, I became aware of Billy. My uh, younger brother was on the folk circuit, oh. and uh, I, I did know Billy from Partick. We used to go into a pub called the Quarter Jail in Partick. Uh, and I used to go back and say to my then girlfriend, now my wife, I met Billy Connolly in Partick, my face is sore, because he was as funny then as he is now, <laughs> and we're in a pub, and at that time Billy would have a drink, he doesn't drink now, uh, but he was from White Street in Partick, I was from Partick Bridge Street, 
and empathic. Everybody knows your name. So uh, I, I knew Billy, and then my brother started in the folk circuit when Billy was um, with the humble bums and what have you. So we'd see him in the, the exotic Ace of Clubs in Dalmuir. Oh. oh. Uh, and, you know, the, Billy was a guy from Partick who became the funniest man who ever lived. Uh, yeah, and it I was a, with that. A, privilege, a privilege to say that uh, we came from the same place and went to the same school. And what about footballers around that area? I'm thinking Danny McGrain, Andy Gray, probably yeah. at the same age as yourself from Drum Chapel. Would, yeah. would you have known them? Would you have seen them? Played uh, against them? Um, we used to uh, go into the, the schools on a Sunday, Kingsbridge Secondary School or Lockdown Primary School, just go over the gate and play on their Red Ash football parts. <laughs> uh, Alec Miller, uh, 20 year coach. man at uh, Rangers, Alec was there at that time. Uh, you're right, Andy was from behind, one street behind me in Lochgoyne Avenue. Uh, then uh, we moved down to Kinfons Drive and Danny lived across the road from us. Um, I used to go on the bus with Danny in the morning. He would go off at Chanesburn Roundabout where the Lisbon Lion, Jim Craig, would pick him up in the car, uh -huh. take him to Celtic Park. Wow. And I would continue on the bus uh, to the Sunday Post, which is where I cut my journalistic teeth. So Danny and I knew each other in that way and it, you know many years later uh, Danny asked me to write his biography um, uh, one of the best things that happened to me uh, so uh, in sunshine or in shadow uh, the Danny McGrain story I remember it when it came out I yeah it being serialized mm. uh, so again drum chapel you, you, you know, you don't get above yourself uh, with that kind of background. So mm -hmm. um, you might be Danny McGrain or you might be Andy Gray or you might be Hugh Keevans. But I always remember the day that one of my daughters got married and uh, it was in Partick. She went and asked if she could get married in this particular church in Partick because it was where uh, we had attended as children. Mm -hmm. And I was standing at the back of the church with my daughter on my arm about to hear the, the walk-on music and in you go. And a wee woman said, are you big Frank Keevans boy? <laughs> and, I, and I thought, you know, here I am. Uh, it's been years and years and years since I lived in Partick. Uh, and if you think that you're a big shot because you write for a newspaper or you're on the radio, forget it. In Partick, you're big Frank Keevans boy. I'm intrigued to hear you use the word big there. Yeah. Now, I've never heard that said about you. So, was your father a big man? Yeah, he was very tall. So, uh, where did you get your height from? My mother, she was a dwarf. <laughs> uh, so, the, the, it was a combination, you know. The, the, he was a where did you get your love guy. of words from, Hugh? Um, because you're not, you're not a, a sports hack. You are a sports writer. Well, You, you, you know, prose yeah. is your game. Not, you know, a, a lot of the guys that you've worked with and I've worked with, you know, they link together words yeah. and we threw in some punctuation. But <laughs> you, uh, every That's very piece kind of you. Is, was, was crafted. Um, my wife always says the same thing. You've made very little go a long, long way. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was the kid at school. That Janet's was, harsh. Yeah. <laughs> I was the kid at school that was good at composition, as they called it then. Huh. Uh, I could write a story and it went on. Uh, I had a teacher at secondary school who, who, my English teacher, who was appreciative of what I could do and who wanted me to go into the acting profession, believe it or not. Uh, you know, you would act out plays in secondary school and he said to me that he thought that I might have a flair for the acting profession. Mm -hmm. But... When you're in drum chapel, unless you're James McAvoy, you don't yes. you don't gravitate towards the acting profession. I wish I had, in some respects. You've got the corduroy jacket on. I thought that I would be the first man ever to do this programme in a corduroy jacket and probably the last. Uh, so, it, purely and simply, uh, I had a way with words. I, I don't know where it came from. Um, it, it didn't run the family. Uh, but it was something that I 
was grateful for and cultivated. Now, for those of you listening outside Western Central Scotland, there is a phenomenon that is called Super Scoreboard, which is uh, Radio Clyde, the, the local ILR station here in Glasgow. Um, and I don't know what the figures are now, but when I worked on it as a kid, they got half a million listeners every Saturday, which is a quarter of the available population. Yeah. And an old firm day before Sky showed them live, uh-huh. They got a million listeners, yeah. literally half the population, and the BBC Sports Sound didn't register. So Hugh is the star of that, and you have been for, well, you were just telling me half of your life now, and that's in, that's incredible. Yeah. Was, was it life-changing getting a job on, calling it local radio undersells it because it ranks above satellite TV and terrestrial TV in this part of the world, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Um it all started for me. I wrote a book with a, a good friend of mine, Kevin McCara. Mm-hmm. 100 Cups, it was called, The History of the Scottish Cup. I did an interview with Richard Park, legendary presenter of the My programme. hero. Yes. And again, he will not be known out with Central Scotland. Yeah, well, I, I, I was interviewed by Richard at Hamden Park on the Saturday. And uh, on the Monday, I received a phone call asking me if I would come in for an interview. Now, I had no thoughts whatsoever about a a career in broadcasting, far less half of my life there. And many years later, I was told by Paul Cooney, who was a presenter of the programme as well, that they had listened back to the interview and Richard Park had said, that guy's got a weird voice. (laughs) So a whole career in radio was not based on any God-given talent for the the medium. It was based purely and simply on, that guy's got a weird voice. Being unique. So a face for radio and a voice yeah. for newspapers, <laughs> and it's been tremendous. The, 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 the biggest thing, and I'd like to mention them, the biggest thing was at the age of 47, I was uh, paired up with a young call him what you will, music presenter or DJ, called George Bowie. A phenomenon. Yes. And again, George does the, the Radio Clyde FM breakfast show, but across Scotland, everyone will know him for being the host of GBX, yeah. which is a phenomenon. So you started with him when you were 47. 47. I was heading, metaphorically, for the pipe, the slippers and the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was paired with this guy who or immediately... Or a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, who immediately christened me the Shugster. <laughs> and my darling wife said to me, what does that mean? And I said, I don't know, but it sounds like fun. So uh, one week into my time with George on the breakfast show, mm. I had received an application form for 7th Heaven Lap Dancing Club. Oh. I had received... Uh, an application to join the Harvard Hair Clinic and I had received a brochure from Stena Stairlifts. <laughs> so I thought, I, I'm not having this. And as I marched towards Alec de Dixon, another man you'll know very well who ran the place. Good Lord. As I was marching towards his office full of righteous indignation, I thought, This guy, Bowie, is going to reinvent me. (laughs) So I turned in my heels and I get into it with George Bowie and I had a fabulous time with him and I'll always credit George Bowie for having reinvented me Mm -hmm. and instead of being 47 going on 48, Mm -hmm. I then became 47 going on 44, 41, (laughs) 39 uh, and... You got a show age. Yeah. You got and while George is on FM on AM is our the normal presenter of this program, Ewan Cameron, who's yeah. taking a break just now from this and and who can blame him? <laughs> not you know, not one is sitting next to producer John and uh, and Grado. Uh, but it's really tough getting up at that time in the morning. Oh, uh, so fair play to you. Fair play to you. Listen, I must ask you um about the the problems that go with with uh, the the fame, if you like. In yeah. fact, you were on, you were featured on Only an Excuse, which, I, again, is a national programme, a TV programme, and yet this local radio station um, almost took over half an hour one year. Yeah. What was it like 
having Johnny Watson and Tony Roper rip the piss out. <laughs> uh, I was amazed at how thorough they are. You know, they yeah. come, uh, they send someone out who uh, takes your glasses and they film your glasses to make sure you get the right type and this and that. Uh, I'll never forget my mother, God rest her, on the occasion that it was shown. And she looked at me. I, we'd gone up to her flat in Drumchapel to, because it was New Year time. Yeah. Uh, and she looked at me, and then she looked at the TV, and she looked at me, looked at the TV, and said, why are they doing this to you? <laughs> she worried about it, but I thought, wow. You know, from uh, newspaper guys are hardworking, diligent. I don't care what social media says about them. Yeah. I'm proud to be part of the profession. But you never think that one day it will lead to Johnny Watson and Lord Roper doing you on the TV. <laughs> so I mean, I've got an ego like everyone else. It was great. What about the offer to go to the lap dancing? Did you take them up on it? No. <laughs> uh, Lady Keevans would not have approved, and therefore, yeah. if uh, if she not doesn't approve, no. I mean, you've met the woman, you know, it's not a woman mm. to be trifled with. You know? Jan, it's a feisty woman, John, <laughs> a feisty woman. And, of course, there would have been that problem. I imagine your glasses would have steamed up. <laughs> so the value would have been questionable. Uh, Stena Stairlift, maybe one day? Um, well, we've moved to a flat now, you see. We used to <laughs> a bungalow? Yeah, we moved to a flat, uh, and we're on the first floor, so there's no stairs involved. And the hair transplant? Well... Thank goodness I've, I've got some left and that's fine. That's good, that's good. But it shows you, even back then, before the advent of social media, you were a, an influencer, clearly, <laughs> for the kids and for the uh, those who can't make it up the stairs of an evening or a, or a morning, for that matter. Um, what about the what about the awkward things that have happened? Has there ever been a point where your fame has been a pain in the backside? The, the, there's a, a downside to being a columnist. I, I went to the Sunday Mail... And uh, I'm sure that I did so because Radio Clyde had given me a, a profile. Mm -hmm. So I replaced Jerry McNee. I, I shouldn't say replaced. I should say I succeeded Jerry McNee. The case. original shock job. Yes, yes. Uh, and a good man. And yeah. uh, I succeeded Jerry when he went off to pastures near. And in the first week, um, I had a phone call from a dear friend, someone whose biography I also wrote, Tommy Burns, and he did not like something that I had written in my inaugural column for the Sunday Mail. And, oh, really? Uh, he gave me what for on the phone. Uh, so I realised then that if you are a columnist and your job is to offer an opinion, it may have consequences. The biggest consequence of all was being thrown out of the Celtic Social Club in London Road <laughs> uh, when Kenny Dalgleish was interim manager. You remember that John Barnes got a job, lasted a, a few months, mm -hmm. went out of the cup to Inverness Cali Thistle at Celtic Park and lost his job. Kenny took over from then until the end of the season and he and I just did not see eye to eye. Had you got on previously when I was at Celtic? No, not really, no. Um, the, was that because of you or because of him, do you think? Um, I, Kenny's not big on the, the media. Mm. Full stop. And uh, he didn't like being criticised in print. Now, who does? But it is sometimes the job of a columnist to say something that... As I say, Tommy was a, a dear friend and asked me to write his book, but... When Twist and turns. W yeah. If I remember correctly. Which, if, you know, it, so even Tommy would phone him, phone me up and say, but... Mm -hmm. Awkward. Um, thrown out of the, the Celtic Social Club, great hoo-ha. And three weeks later, Celtic are playing at Dundee at Dens Park. Now, it's the dream of all young boys in Glasgow to hear the crowd at a football match sing their name. <laughs> and at Dens Park, I could hear it starting. Shuey oh. Chevens. <laughs> and I thought, I thought of my, my mother who uh, adored Celtic but had never, ever 
seen them play. Uh, she's one of those Glasgow mammies uh, who... Did she know everything about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother's like that. Yeah. She, she had met Charlie Tully on the boat to <laughs> Dublin when <laughs> my mother and father went to Dublin for their honeymoon. And they met Charlie Tully, who was then a phenomenon within mm -hmm. Celtic Park. So, you know, say, you hear the crowd saying, and you think of your mother and all the members of the family who uh, supported Celtic. You're a wanker. <laughs> You're a wanker. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and I looked, down at the, I looked down at the touchline and there was Sir Kenny urging the crowd to sing it louder. No way, was he conducting the choir? Sing it louder. Good. Uh, Good. Now, I... That, I um, Can you imagine the storm about that now, though, on the uh, social media age, that, that lack oh, of gravitas? Well, you know, had social media uh, been around then, I would not have had a life worth living. Yeah. Um, Kenny would have got it, too, for doing that. Well... Everyone would have been offended at everything. But, you know, Sir Kenneth is now Sir Kenneth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will be 70 years old in a fortnight. Uh, I don't, Kenny must be round about the same. So we're all codgers now. You know, that was then and this is now. Yeah. Uh, I look back on that not with disdain. I look back on that as a career highlight. Uh -huh. The day the crowd was huge. <laughs> uh, so I'm not at all offended, hurt, upset, nothing. It was just part of the life that I led. So if you were one of the crowd at Dens Park that day singing Huey Keevans, you're a wanker, he thanks you for the feedback. <laughs> yes. And by the way, if you don't know the context, that the reason that Hugh was in the Celtic Social Club was as a punishment, oh. and it's the most stupid idea there's ever been, but as a punishment for the, the media for daring to criticise John Barnes for getting humped yeah. by Inverness Cali Thistle well, and humped by Harps the week before. Of course, the board sacked him, not the press. Um, as this they moved the press conferences yeah. to, first of all, Baird's Bar. Yeah, which lasted one week. Well, I was there that day and it was an old firm game they were previewing and I was leaning on the bar at the side uh, and there were people ordering pints um, uh, at the bar, it was quite su surreal. I was uh, I was amazed at how busy this house was <laughs> on a Friday morning. Anyway, and and I threw in a question to Kenny, leaning on the bar. Uh -huh. Poor Vita reset. The Norwegian defender was sitting next to him, looking most bewildered. But I said, Kenny, would you agree that you've got to win this old firm game on Saturday? Otherwise, it's game over. So, like a lot of the people in here today you'll be drinking a Last Chance Saloon on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which was a bit impertinent. However, um, we were being... We knew what we were there for. And the guy behind me, in fact, he was kind of wrapped around me, had a pint of lager there, and I was here. And, of course, you know, as most people are, twice the height of me. Yeah, we bastard. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God. And Kenny was still chatting, and I just walked... <laughs> We walked out the front door and waited till everybody emerged at the end of it. It was the most bizarre. It was designed well, to intimidate, and it's certainly unnerved. The, these things um, have a tendency to grow arms and legs. So the hoo-ha, and then on the <laughs> Monday, <laughs> I'm at a cash point in the city centre. <laughs> and I felt the sharp object in my back. And a man mm. in, we'll call it a mock Irish accent, saying, put your hands on the air. <laughs> and I thought, no, surely not. <laughs> and turn around slowly. And I thought, oh, my God. A flashpoint at the cash point. Where's this going? And I turned around. And it was Bobby Williamson, the commandment manager. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, <laughs> now, Bobby and I got on famously. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was at one of my girl's weddings and uh, he's a terrific guy. Grumpy as can yeah. be. But, we uh, must ask Stephen Dobie about him later. But a grumpy, lovable guy. 
And I said, Bobby, I nearly jumped out my skin there. And he could see that I was genuinely ashen-faced yeah. because I thought, oh. And he said, oh. I mean, we went round to Charlie Nicholas at a pub in town at that time. Cafe Cine, apparently. We, I was never there. <laughs> <laughs> and we, Much. We went, we went round there for the afternoon until Janet called and said, where are you? <laughs> and I said, I met Bobby Williamson. Get back home. Uh, so as I say these things grew arms and legs Mm -hmm. Uh, but Mm -hmm. it was part of a life spent in this game Mm -hmm. and uh, um, I always say to every taxi driver who will say to me you never get fed up with it and I always say listen it paid for two daughters weddings (laughs) it was a, a way of earning money but it was a great way of earning money you've never uh, driven I took lessons mm-hmm. and I took a test. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the test, the gentleman brought out the sheet of paper and I said, listen, let's not bother with that. You don't need to tell me what was good at uh-huh. or bad at. Uh-huh. I just hope this has not been a career-changing moment for you. <laughs> get out of the car, As he shut was the fishing door. out of the Clyde. <laughs> I never went back into the driver's side again. So because of that, you've had to put up with every taxi driver in Clyde Bank. Yeah. Drumchapel, Glasgow, yeah. and had to listen to every pub rumour. What's the pub worst pub rumour or the worst taxi driver rumour delivered to you as fact, of course? It wasn't me. It was my wife. My wife drives. Her car was in for a service. She was shopping. We lived in Clyde Bank at that particular time. She was shopping and she was bringing the shopping back by taxi. So she said Park Hall Road, which was where we lived at that time. I said, oh, Park Hall Road. That's you, Keevans, lives there. I said, does he really? Aye, ah, he lives there. Celtic bought him the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, she had to listen to the full rant about, uh, Peter Lawwell looks after him and da 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 da. Got to the door, and uh, as I say, my, my wife is a, a Highlander, um, one of eight children, doesn't take any. Nonsense. I said, I am Mrs. Keevans. Celtic didn't buy that house. And she banged the door shut. And that was the end of that taxi ride. Brilliant. So, you know, people... people They all have their own truth, don't they? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, the the younger element of the Celtic supporters who are too young to know about anything, uh, uh, they will have me down as anti-Celtic. The Ranger supporters... Uh, will believe that um, I am worked from the back by Peter Lawwell. As I always say to people, I'm not good enough for the green half of the city who know that I was born into the green half of the city. And because I'm not from the blue half of the city, the blue half of the city don't trust me. So I'm in the middle, disliked by the pair of them. John, our producer, is a Falkirk fan and he think he doesn't like you because you're from Glasgow. <laughs> so you can't win. Yeah, you all sorts you of subdivisions. Yeah. You, you can't win. Listen, I remember as a 16-year-old starting uh, schoolboy at Radio Clyde. Um, you may have seen me in my school uniform from midweek <laughs> programs. But I remember the first week I was in, listening to the radio. It was the lunchtime sports desk on the Tiger Tim lunchtime show, as it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, news from Tannadice, Kevin Gallagher has pissed a late fatness test. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, it was the first outtake that I can remember. And I remember telling the sports editor at the time, Ken McRobb, did you hear that? And his face lit up and he ran away to get the tape and it appeared in a thing, and I'd never heard of this, called the Christmas tape. Uh, what is your worst Christmas tape? Upcock. Uh, uh, probably that. I mean, uh, I remember Packy Bonner phoning me uh, when it had been played out. Oh, really? And he said, I almost crashed the car. <laughs> and I, I said, Packy, all the years we've known each other and you've never phoned me up to say, that was good, I heard yeah. you on the radio. And, uh, so the first time I say, piss the fatness test, you're on the phone right away. <laughs> um it's a very, you know this to be the case, uh, 
once it's out your mouth, it's out. It's gone. You can't bring it back. Uh, I'm actually surprised that there haven't been more of those. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, the phone in Super Scoreboard. People think that one in every two callers will swear at some point. They don't. Mm. It's quite remarkable. I had two in seven years. Yeah. The, 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 there are, and there will always be, some who do, and they don't do it because they swear naturally. They just get excited and carried away. Mm-hmm. I went back home one night, and Janet said to me, how was the programme? And I said, yeah, it was fine, but one guy gave me a terrible time on the phone. In. Said, what about? I said, well, we're discussing <laughs> Danny McGrain. I went, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, how do you know so much about it? He said, oh, he's phoning from here. Said, <laughs> what, your house? Yeah. <laughs> right. He said, do you remember when you left, they were delivering the tumble dryer and the guy was going to plumb it in? And he said, well, it got to five o'clock. And he said, Mrs. Stevens, would it be okay if you use your phone? And he phoned the programme. <laughs> and I heard them giving you a hard time <laughs> and I said you're telling me that I get dogs abuse and I was paying for the call <laughs> and I said yeah <laughs> and I said well, what do you think about that I said well you deserve all you get and that was the, end. the, the, the one of the toughest calls ever I was paying that for the call that is magnificent that is crackpot behaviour I am um, the first time the red delay button and, and most radio stations use a 10 second delay um, there's a box that st- stretches the sound so that between it going <laughs> on air uh, or you saying something and it going on air there's a 10 second gap Capital Radio didn't when they did a football programme and I heard a fellow phone up and say to Bobby Moore hi Bobby Why, how come you're such an old sea bomb yeah it went out yeah. Um, you probably get away with that in London but uh, the first time the red button was used was my first week in the job so I was a bewildered T-boy in my school uniform and it was a European night so in those days uh, Celtic as the champions were playing the European Cup Rangers were playing in the UEFA Cup um, and uh, whoever was in the Cup Winners Cup would have been playing the same night and on the Saturday Rangers had beaten Celtic 5-1 at Parkhead. Uh-huh. At Ibrook, sorry. Um, and it was a midweek European game. And Billy McNeil was being interviewed live on the air after Celtic had won this European game. And with interviewed by Chick Young. And at the end of it, Derek Johnson, who'd been in the studio, interrupted. So Billy, uh, Chick said, hey, thanks, Billy. Yeah. Thanks, Chick. And Derek shouted, Billy! And Billy said, Yes. It's Derek Johnson here. And Billy said, oh, fucking hell. <coughs> yeah. I might have known you'd turn up this week. And of course, then Billy thought, oh, my God, I'm on the air. Yeah. And all hell broke loose. And somebody pressed the red button before Big Billy said, oh, fucking hell, man, yeah. went out on air. And I had a cassette of that. I've lost it now. But I had a cassette of that. And um, everyone in Bishop Briggs I'd heard that cassette <laughs> yeah. of Big Billy's finest moment. So uh, uh, have you ever had any hairy ones? No, as I said to you, it's 35 years now, unbelievably. But wow. um, in the first year, I was working with, if there, if there are two people who are and will forever be synonymous with Radio Clyde, they will be Richard Park <laughs> and Jimmy Sanderson. <laughs> I was doing a midweek phone-in with the pair of them now, you remember the late, great Jimmy, known to those of us in the newspaper trade as Solly. I met him once when I was a kid at Hamden. He had the big cigar on the go in the studio. <laughs> in those days, anything went, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the studio used to be covered in fag ash, yeah. I remember that. So he was giving forth to a caller, going through the full Jimmy repertoire, and in his excitement, he dropped the cigar into the bucket at his feet, which was full of paper. Mm-hmm. So I thought, <laughs> and sure enough, the flames rose. And I looked at Richard Park, and I was naive to the ways of studio discipline. I hadn't been there that long. And Richard gave me his best stupid boy look. 
And we got to the commercial break. He said, took off his can and said, what is it? I said, the studio is on fire. (laughs) 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 And we Jimmy was in full flow and hadn't even noticed. Now, he was the prototype. Those of us who followed on had Jimmy Sanderson to thank. But there he was in full flow and had no recollection of the studio being on fire. So I I thought to myself, I am now in a very special environment. And you've been setting fire to West Central Scotland for 35 years since then. Right, before we're tempted to do a Jimmy Sanderson impersonation, we're going to get John to play a sting and then we will re-emerge in moments from now with a big hairy wrestler sitting next to you. Good. So here we are then. Right, Grado, <laughs> welcome to the studio. We've been having great chat here without you. I know, he's well taking ages. <laughs> um, it must be somebody with a good story. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Does that narrow it down for you? Well, there's plenty of people that have good stories, but you can get that for people, Tan. Tan man. <laughs> <laughs> Should I start the process? Yeah. I, I think, first of all, you, just to give you an idea of the sort of individual that you've got sitting next to you and you cannot see because you're blindfolded, have a little feel at this gentleman's clobber. Right, so you tell me it was a woman in a bikini? Yeah, I lied about that. Right, okay. So, is it... Oh, wait, wait. Now, what about that for quality? What are you feeling there? Oh, that is a, that is a thick... That is a thick jerkin. <laughs> or it is a thick... It's a thick suit coat. Is it a suit coat? Very, very good quality. Is that cashmere? Is it Asia? Is it is that iron cotton? Is that an iron? Oh, sorry, I poked your face there. Uh, that right. is that is corduroy. It's a corduroy sports Cor- jacket. Would you say corduroy mystery sports guess? Sports jacket. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so you, they've, you got like their, they've got their horns. Uh, f- they've got their arms folded. Uh-huh. That's not. a defensive way. I mean, who can blame? Who can blame them? But, but it's a venerable individual. A venerable. Yeah, not venereal. What the fuck, D- David? Stop hitting me with these big words. Smart. Big, it's a smart person. Yeah. Right. Is it a doctor? A, a per- yeah. Is it Hillary? <laughs> For GMTV, is it Hillary? Is it you, Hillary? <laughs> nah. To see. It's a it's a, a, a gentleman of, of, of class. Now, how uh, many chins has he got? Right. Uh, assess, assess. Oh, that's in that lovely soft face. Nice chin. Nice neck. Nice neck? I'm a little... Right, you've... I'm, a little, I, I'm a little to see the person who's got thin hair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you would accept that. Thin. Not not balding, but thin. Right, thin. Side shed. Got a side shed on there? Want to go? Yeah, again, a gentleman of a certain age. So you're an older guy? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. you're very smart. Can I take a stiff of you, Mr. Older Man? It might be embalming fluids you smell. <laughs> oh, aye. You smell like my gran? <laughs> do you do you never have a visage? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. I can smell never have a visage after you. you so smell, you smell like my old granny. You might want to start asking some questions about about um, this gentleman's line of work. Uh, right. So, were you uh, involved in television and entertainment? I am. Is that an accent, or are you putting that on? That's a nice weekend. Say that again. I am. I am. I am. That is a put on voice. Is it a. Uh, right. No, if it. I've just realised. Have you, have you, have you, yeah, a presenter? In a way. I've just realised oh. you've actually you've actually taken off your spectacles, which are something of a trademark. To make try, making it tougher for. Somebody that wears glasses on the telly. Mm. That wears old coats and smells like my gran. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you 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 are in it. Are you still on the telly? I'm not. You're not still on the TV. No. Have we got a yank in here? Is it a yank? Well, um, or is he putting on the accent? Uh, the Celtic crowd once said it was a wank. <laughs> uh, that you're sitting. All right. Okay. To. So you're football related. Yes. Right. Older man, you're an old football manager. You're, by the way, you're close. You're close when you say television. Right. 
So you're an old, you're an old telepresenter. No, no. You're an old commentator. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an old commentator? I was. How do you, how did you pronounce DeMarcus Beasley? DeMarcus Beasley. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because there's this commentator out there that was calling him Marcus de Beasley, and that was never his name. <laughs> so it's no Archie McPherson. Oh, oh, oh. No, no. But along that the lines, no? I have think you, think so, yeah. Have you ever worked with Archie McPherson? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No way, hold on, wait a minute. I can't believe it. Just what you just said there. Right, and I'm just adding it up. Glasses, you smell like my grand. Is it Hugh Keevans? It is. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I'm delighted with that. Oh, I'm, do you know what? I'm starstruck. I'm, I'm literally starstruck. So you should be, young man. I've always wanted to meet you. Thank you. Oh, it's great seeing you. Oh, do you know what? You know what I like about you, Hugh? When, when you, when this will be a short list when here. You're, you're, no, but I like when you're on the radio. You always, you've got, you're good at pronouncing things. Like, how do you say astute? Astute. See? Yeah. I well, like that. No See growth that again? stops astute. here. And there's, oh, there's another word that you say that I always pick up and I go, he's really good at the English language. I suppose that's why you're on the telly, isn't it? That's why you get radio. <laughs> you've got a good knowledge of ver verbals. You're good at the, f you know what I mean? Yeah, Does he's that a make tickle sense? as fuck. A tickle as fuck. That's what you're here. It's just that I've been everywhere now. <laughs> this is great. Now, you see, I'm a regular listener to Radio Clyde, right? Uh, I love when you're on. And I was away in the summer. I went um, to a lodge house with my girlfriend. And I said, I need to listen tonight because you're on the night. Yeah. And see, when I was listening, I thought... <laughs> Hugh Keevens cannot be asked with you and Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I goes, he cannot. That he, this is this is a graph for Peril Shug here. I goes, this is nay. Hugh, Hugh's annoying him. Well, I remember his first rant. It was a Monday. It was a Monday night. It was yeah. no rant about. Did, it was, it was about Neil then. Aye. Uh, and he went off the deep end and said that Neil would be sacked by Christmas. Oh, that's his usual carry on. And for once, I didn't interrupt. You know, <laughs> I, I let him <laughs> hang himself and hang himself <laughs> and hang himself and then came in and <laughs> slap him. <laughs> uh, now, I've got uh, a high regard for Ewan because you can't be as popular as Ewan unless you're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought he's way over the top and he's given this his best shot, as you said earlier, to shock. Uh, he thinks uh, he's Katie Hopkins. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean by that? Do, do you get, uh, he looks uh, for the shock. He wants to. He's yeah, better looking stuff. than Katie Hopkins, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I thought, just Rain th it in a bit. think of your answer. Think of your answer. Don't say anything. Just let him go right off the top deal. <laughs> uh, and, you know, he has, since then, gone back and said, right, I got it wrong. Le Neil Lennon will not be sacked by Christmas. Uh, well, so it's only Halloween. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, so is it the one thing about that length of time, you have to reinvent yourself. You have to uh, learn to work with a Ewan. Adapt. Or the the Gordon Duncan who presents uh, Super Scoreboard now. He's brilliant. Was mm -hmm. not yes. born when mm -hmm. I started on Radio Clyde. So right. I, I've I've gone. Um, for that length of time that now they're coming in and they weren't born when I started Aye. there, you know. Uh, I, I, I really like Gordon as a presenter. Yeah, he's smashing. I think he's brilliant. And I really thought when uh, Jerry left to go to Celtic TV, I thought, I wonder who they're going to get. And within the first weeks, uh, I heard, uh, what's his name again? I forgot his name. Gordon. 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 Um, I thought he's brilliant. And especially for his age as well, his knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. And he has, he's, he's a Motherwell fan, isn't he? Big time. Aye, big time Motherwell fan. So there's no, you know... We were out doing a... a Although he, I'm sure he probably still gets it for folk going, oh, you're a Rangers fan, you're a Celtic fan. Well, well, like everybody does, well, but... We're, we're doing a quiz <laughs> uh, in a pub in the East End last Friday. Um, a Radio Clyde affair. And, you know, they kept saying to him, you know, which stand at Celtic Park do you sit in? Or which stand at Ibrox do you sit in? Mm. Now, if they're asking you questions like that, you, you're you're doing your job properly. Although he's a self-declared Motherwell fan, and it's absolutely true. Motherwell mm. through mm -hmm. and through. But the funny thing, is, and you'll know this, Grado, from working with, with the public, you know, th 
the first guy to come up, Hugh, can I get a photo to take me? Aye. And I said, yeah, of course. I said, my father hated you. Aye, 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 I get that. Aye, I get that. Aye. I'll get, um, uh, this is for my husband. This is for my husband. I don't like you. I don't care who you are. Well, I don't fucking care who you are. You know what yeah. I mean? It's one of the ones. I know, so, they have to put you in your place. But, was, uh, there ever, was there ever a pundit, Huey? That I remember Jerry McNee and Chick Young having a real ding-dong one time. And I get the feeling that Archie and Chick... Didn't see eye to eye when they yeah. were on Radio Clyde. Yeah. I don't know why I got that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> was there ever one that you didn't like yourself and it was that there was a genuine edge to your on air hand grenade throwing? You? <laughs> 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 no, nah, I, I, I don't think I've ever disliked anyone. You know, you've had the, your verbal spats. Um, I mean, Peter Martin one time called me a buffoon. <gasps> and I thought, a buffoon. That's a bit Is that rich. right? Uh, so, uh, did you paste them? I, I waited until the Sunday, and I phoned them and said, "Buffoon, you really think I'm a buffoon? You think mm. I'd lasted this long if I was a buffoon?" <laughs> Love it. Now Peter is a great friend, but he he was trying to make his mark at that particular time, and that's fine. Everyone has to make mm -hmm. their mark, or you'll be forgotten about. But I just thought, nah, that's, I can't have Step to line, aye. Um, mm. So, but to say, we, we are the very best of friends. But that was, I've never disliked anyone that was on the programme. What about players or managers? Aye. I've disliked a few of those, yeah. <laughs> 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 they, they'd probably dislike you back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's but, the way it goes, but isn't but it? that's allowable. Mm -hmm. How know, did you get on with Steen? I was in absolute awe because... Mm. Uh, I started on the 5th of January, 1970, in newspapers. Now, on the 6th of January, 1970, and we're coming up for the 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. I went in, uh, out to Celtic to interview Billy McNeil. Now, two and a half years earlier, Billy McNeil had the, been the first British player to hold the European Cup aloft. Billy treated me like a long-lost family member even though I'd been in journalism for precisely 24 hours. <laughs> and the friendship lasted for decades. Um, but with Big Jock, people said to me, don't even ask him a question mm -hmm. unless you're absolutely sure it's a good question. Wait until you're confident enough. And <laughs> he had an unbelievable aura oh. about him, as well as being a, a genius as a football manager, an incredible aura. Now, he was at Celtic. Willie Waddle was at Rangers. Equally scary. I've said to Willie Waddle, the most innocuous thing, like any injuries, Willie. But oh. it was Willie. <gasps> oh, right, aye. The glasses went halfway down his nose. He just turned his back and walked halfway up the marble staircase. He waited till he got to the halfway bit and said, Willie? <laughs> Willie? And kept walking. <laughs> uh, you know, I, this fresh-faced, pimply youth, <laughs> had addressed Willie Waddle as Willie, and not Mr. Waddle. Mm -hmm. Um And uh, you, you learn your lessons as you go along. But do you know think that kind, that's kind of missing now? For football. Like, you know, it's like, I remember listening to a, a Rangers player at the time and he was referring to Graham Murray as mutts. Yeah, yeah. At the time, and I'm going, you know. Well, that's when you know, Grado, that he's getting no respect. That's what uh, I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, you know, because no one, even Big Billy, Bertie Old, whoever was around at that particular time, no one would ever have referred to... Jock Steen's anything other than gaffer. Aye. Uh, there were one or two who used to call him Big Hokey Cokey, uh, but not <laughs> really? when he was at. Why? <laughs> well, Big Hokey Cokey, Big Joke. Uh, you know, the, but he'd never have said it in his presence. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, until the day he died, I always felt, I mean, to be perfectly truthful, there were times when I discovered that his bark was worse than his bite. Yeah. You know, uh, we were in uh, Oslo and I had gone out to see him on my own and he was sitting under the shade of a tree, Team's Hotel, and 
I felt myself get smaller and smaller and smaller as I walked closer and closer and closer really? to him. And he said to me, well, sometimes the well runs dry. In other words, I've had you guys all day, and I'll have you all day tomorrow, and the following week, the week after that. Sometimes there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, sometimes the well runs dry. <laughs> and then he proceeded to give me a great story. Mm. You know, he just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to think that I could sworn in any time I liked. But he gave me a great story. And I went back clicking my heels in the air. But, I mean, Danny McGrain, to this day, always refers to Mr. Strain. Aye. You know, in, in, a, with, in a conversation mm -hmm. with someone that he, he lived in Drumchapel with. Was that because it was a more deferential age or was it yeah. because it was big jock? Um, both, was that special? Both, David. Um, it was a more deferential age. Uh, nowadays, you know, cocky little guys all over the place. Oh, yeah, um, but also, this man got the original nine in a row, won the European Cup, before anybody else in Britain. So this man had the full set and was deserving of your respect. It is a more it was a more deferential age. Be honest, have you sat in the house cradle right. wanting to wanting to throttle this man here? <laughs> do you know what? Has I'm, he offended I've got you at come, some point. No, do you know what? I've got to come clean like um uh -oh. there's, there's I can handle Shug. I can handle you. I, I, I honestly there's a lot of Rangers fans out there that you know though they don't speak highly <laughs> of Mr. Keyes. <laughs> right, they do. Nice well, that's true. That, no, do you know what I mean? But I've always liked listening to you. I've always liked listening to you. Um, I think I, I just have I've always I've always listened to you. And I've got to say as well, when when uh, as a Rangers fan, um, listening to the way you spoke about Billy McNeil when he passed, uh -huh. the way you you you, you, ca you carried the show that night. I don't know if it was that night or the day after. Just the way you spoke about him, the passion and the respect for you, the respect for him that you had, um, I, I really, I really, really enjoyed Very it. Kind. Uh, you know, it's not just Rangers fans. Let me assure you. <laughs> you know, uh, this is not a state secret, but one of my brothers is a priest, and he's coming back from a funeral, and he gave me a call uh, about a family matter, and I said, "Where are you, anyway?" He said, "My way back from the crematorium." Uh, he said, "The he said the funny thing." He said the the body came into the church last night and uh, they looked up and saw my name. They said, oh, it's a funny name, Keevan. Do you any? Uh, he said, yeah, he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, oh, he said, uh, Paddy in the coffin. <laughs> Couldn't he stab you, brother? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, said, uh, he, he used to have, used to have many a fight with him on the super scoreboard. Did, did, did. So uh, I, said to him, I said to my brother, the family haven't put me down as cause of death, have they? <laughs> <laughs> does it ever that does it bother you? No, does it bother you? No, I mean, you, you know, spew Evans. Oh nah, that, yeah, that, take that as a banter. That, 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 listen, <laughs> I, I've had you never heard that one. Spew, I've had, spew Evans. Evans. I've had decades <laughs> of earnings out of this. They can call me whatever they like. Uh, I really, it really is water <laughs> off a duck. I, and I believe that. But I'll tell you, this is some city. My Late mother-in-law, God rest her, was in the Beatson. And in her room were all of the women folk. My two girls, my wife, all, the, all of her daughters. It was a women-only thing. Mm -hmm. And I was standing there and I was listening to my children, my wife, my sisters-in-law crying. Because it was very near the end. And you're staring into the distance. And a voice said, are you Hugh Keevans? <laughs> and I said, uh, ah. He said, uh, who do you think I win the league? <laughs> 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 now, <laughs> I, I can barely hear his question for the sound of wailing coming from my mother-in-law's room. <laughs> and I Dear said to him, uh, I mean, it's no funny, but it's... I said, uh, Celtic, you're kidding me, oh. <laughs> I said, listen, you asked me a question. I've been giving the answer. It's not up for debate. If you think something else, 
good luck to you, but I've given my answer. He looked above my head and it said, high dependency unit. And he said, nothing serious, I hope. <laughs> 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 and he walked away. Oh, that's and glorious. I, I, and, and I thought, you know, only in this city can you get that kind of thing. Aye. And you have to roll with it. Oh, no, you know, no. The, no point in me running after him and saying, listen, do you know my mother-in-law is dying in there? Aye. You know, uh, he he just thought, oh, that's huge even. Uh, so. I had the same situation when my, my mother passed and I had to go, go for a sick line and I'm standing in the queue in the doctors. And there was a guy behind me and he's going, get up, you know, and I got, I got a selfie. I'm going, I ain't not bother anybody. He gets a selfie and that, goes in and sees the doctors. And I come back out and he was waiting on me. He says, listen, my, my grandson's a big fan. Is there any chance you could just jump in the motor, come up the noon and see my grandson? A couple of photos. I says, look, mate, I've got a lot one. I goes, uh, <laughs> That's a new one. Aye, I goes, look, I've, I goes, uh, really, I've got eight. Oh, come on, come on. He's only up the road. Jump in the motor, only take you two minutes. I'm going, fucking, Ma just died yesterday. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And he's asking me for pictures, but as you say, it's the, the, the well, world well, we live in, isn't well, it? Let me tell you the other side of it. You know, you were talking about the Ranger supporters. Uh, they don't know half of it. They don't know the half of it. I went to Ibrox when uh, Walter was manager, and outside in the car um, is my brother-in-law and his son, who had undergone a very serious brain operation. They they lived in uh, Milton Keynes. So Walter came out, and he's got a towel round the waist. He's just been in the shower. I said, "Shug, was I supposed to see you?" And I said, "No." He said, "What's up?" I said, listen, Walter, I've got one of uh, Janet's nephews outside. Um, big Ranger supporter. Had a brain operation and the family are trying to keep his spirits up and all the rest of it. He's shug, shug, shug. You're telling me you've got Ranger supporters in your family? <laughs> 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 I said, Walter, what can I tell you? So... Uh, the, now comes the cutting the long story short. Walter said, "Wait there, go and get him and wait there. I'll do it." And I said, "Walter, I can't. The manager." I said, "Just get him." Walter Smith took him all over Ibrook Stadium into where the players were having their lunch. He came out and subsequently produced a folder of photographs with all. You know, the, the Richard Goffs and whoever. Mm -hmm. Now, Walter was kind. The fans don't see that. The fans just think spew keepings, as you say. Walter always treated me extremely well. Um, Billy, uh, the programme that night, which was very kind of you to say, was a, a, a good one. Good job, yeah. um, I could walk among Big Billy, Walter, Davy Hay, Jock Wallace, you name it. Pedro Cucina. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, you took that too far. <laughs> nobody. nobody <laughs> Pedro it, wasn't allowed to walk near you. Human. It, wasn't, it wasn't here long enough to go for a walk. Um, <laughs> so you could do all that. The fans just think, you're this, ah. you're that. But I've told you, there you are, Walter Smith. That's a great story. You could have a joke about... What, you're telling me? No. You get Rangers supporters in your family. Um, and then show an act of extreme kindness like oh, that. So great. I know what I'm all about. And the fans, you're very welcome to your misrepresentations, but that's what they are. What a nice way to end it. That was brilliant. Have you enjoyed that? I've loved that, honestly. I've, I've honestly, I've wanted to bump it into... I'll spew for years. <laughs> 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 no, I really have. I really have. As I say, I've always listened to you on the radio and it's Thank good you. to finally meet you and I can't wait to get the selfies on and go. <laughs> <laughs> He's even on Twitter. I know, I know. I follow him. I know, I follow him. He types it in, in parchment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a quill pen. Uh, in parchment is another word that goes right on my head. <laughs> Hugh, <laughs> you know, it's been great to see you. I have to say, I'm going to blow up his arse now. Mm -hmm. In my career... Hugh, Jerry McNee, uh, and Davy Proven were the guys I learned so much from about doing this job, about standards. Yep. Tr etiquette. Etiquette. 
uh, neutrality, uh, responsibility, and most of all, corduroy jackets. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to tell you, it was 30% off in uh, Loch Lomond Shores. There you are. <laughs> there you go, David. <laughs> I'm going there now. I <laughs> <laughs> did run up. Brilliant. Oh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Thanks so much to Hugh coming in. Stephen Doby is coming up in a minute. Before that, though, we must talk about our Beer 52 match of the week. Well, hey, congratulations to Ranger supporter Chris McCauley, who, alongside David Tanner, correctly guessed the phone there was out in the Aberdeen and Celtic match to win a case of beer. Uh, so Chris McCauley's won a crate of beer. Aye. What do I get? <laughs> Did you know Enter? No. You need Enter? Oh, for fuck's sake. Aye. Well, this week, our Beer 52 match of the week is the League Cup semi at Hamden Park between Rangers and Hearts on Sunday. Now, all you've got to do to win is guess the correct score before midday. On Sunday. Yeah. And everybody gets the right score will go into the draw to win the beer. And you can enter by commenting on the link on the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your score on Twitter to at Football Daft with the hashtag... Free beer. Winners must be 18 or over and stay in the UK. So no, you just want my prediction about the game Rangers and Hearts on Sunday. Mm. Well, as we all know, last weekend, Hearts upped their game, one each. This is going to be a tough one. Um, I'm going to go for Rangers to win 2-1. All right. What about the one the night before, Hibs Celtic? I think Celtic are going to take goals off Hibs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for 4-1. Oh, Okay. Oh, now you can get free beer as well from Beer52. All you need to do is go to beer52.com slash daft and we can sort out eight beers if you cover just £4.95 for the postage grado. Oh, 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 now you're talking. And as an added bonus for the Football Daft listeners, you can get two extra free beers. So that's a total of ten free beers. Your first box will be sent to you next day and will contain beer from all over Korea. It's a Korea high for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a monthly subscription service for beer and Beer 52. Don't hold you to ransom so you can leave when? Anytime. Here, uh -huh. there, anytime. And as I say, I had a wee Mexicano night last week with the boys and I put a lovely Mexican spread, jalapeno poppers, nachos, spicy mints, a full lot, and I supply the boys with my Beer 52s. So just go to beer52.com slash daft to get your first case of 10 beers for free. Could you tell us reading that? So it's time to introduce to Football Daft a man who has just had an erection. Wow. A statue. Oh! Erected right. in his honour at Queen of the South. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. After playing for 11 clubs... He won the English Championship playoff with Swansea, Brendan Rodgers Swansea, of course, and Blackpool, Ian Holloway's, uh, as well as promotion with Crystal Palace. He also has a League Cup and Scottish Cup runner-up medal in his locker, and now back at Queen of the South in his old age, one of the most prolific strikers in Scotland. Please welcome to Football Daft, our Halloween special. Is that? Yeah. You came dressed as... <laughs> An ex model. <laughs> <laughs> An ex model, did you say? <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. I don't think that's funny, Stephen Doby. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Welcome. for having me. Could Just as John, that was funny. Here. That was funny. Um, listen, it is our Halloween special. Before we talk football, let's talk about the big burning issue. <gasps> Who's the ugliest player you've played with? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Halloween monster? Ugliest. Who is the ugliest football player, actually? That's a good question. When I say ugly like football, who do you think of? S who do I think of when I... It's a... It's, I always think of David Dodds, but... That's terrible, and he can't call David all man Dodds. ugly. David, David Dodds, or... Aye. Who else is really ugly? It must have been a real growler in your team at some point. In fact, I'm taking that back. I'm not saying David Dodds. That's, that's, that's somebody's grander. <laughs> no, no, do you know what I mean? Ugly grandas. No, do you know what? No, that's not. I take that back, man. David Dodge is fucking all right, man. He did aid a face like a Halloween cake. It's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Try to think. Uh, there's been quite a few. Michael Doyle last year. At, uh, he thought he was a ticket, but terrible. Really? Absolutely terrible. Would guy. you mean he's having himself? Oh, loves himself. 
like good moves in that, but just right with the Nando's here, idiot. cutting the tight jeans and all aye, that. No socks. Doesn't know his age. Aye. Is he playing Queen of the South? No, he's at Falkirk now. He's at Falkirk. Aye. Oh, oh well, we've got the biggest we Falkirk fan. Falkirk. We John. got rid of him. This is this is Falk up daft Buzzing sitting right here. Right. Right. Uh, listen, you were brought up not that far from here, up in the east end of Glasgow. We we record this in the Temp- Templeton carpet factory at Glasgow Green. You were from the Bar El Berlin. Yeah. What was it like growing up there in the nineteen eighties? Yeah, it was. There was a lot of gang fighting. Um, we stayed right beside uh, Edinburgh Road, so it kind of took Easter House and Berlin up together. Um, so you had to watch what you were doing around about that area because it was gang fighting every night. But I think the people around about there made you grow up a lot quicker. Um, what were they fighting about? Anything. Nothing. Aye. Was there a Rangers really. and Celtic thing going on there or not? No, just, just Easter House and Berlin. And, you, and you were bad L.I.? I was I, but I, I was obviously never into gang fighting. No, mm-hmm. but could you have been but? Yeah, you could have uh, because it was right there. As Aye. I said, where my house was, it was maybe... Hundred yards, for, you could watch for your window. Did watch you have somebody think. saying, "Doby, watch it"? By the way, you've got a bit of talent. Don't get involved in that stuff. You know, you. Can uh, we were always playing football. Right. We were always, uh, but Blanet Primary, the Ash, uh, the Ash Park, as it, as it was at the time. Mm-hmm. That's where they fought. So you had to kind of watch. You seen them coming. You just. Ran up the close. Uh, yeah, away yeah. for it. Done it build. And did you live in the shadow of Berlini Prison? When you walked out the close in the morning, did you see it there? No, Berlini was quite a wee bit away. Mm. Um, but it was, it was, I wouldn't say it was a rough area, but you knew who was, when you seen them coming, you, you, and then you moved out the way. Aye. I'll tell you how rough Berlini is now. Do you know who the ice cream Bob Malcolm <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually? It is He comes up When the kids are up for On uh, school holidays I take them down Big Bob gives them Free ice creams <laughs> And that's how it is Brilliant Brilliant say this. Uh, Do you think he'll be Making a turn at Halloween Or do you think he's Giving out the sweeties For nothing Do you get what I mean by that? Because mm-hmm. it's Halloween yeah. I'm trying to remember See when you were away When you went to the van At Halloween yeah. Did you get something for nothing? I think so. No, no, no. Well, I never anyway. That's a, fucking, that's a question, I think, isn't it? I'm not uh, sure. Grado, I think that's called shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is, that is called. Should Bob appear in, uh, when I said ugly footballers, would you have thought of Bob? Aye, probably. But he went out probably. with Miss Scotland. Aye, oh, so I, that means he's good looking. Good. No, I think that was because he's pals with Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob's got a nice crack. He's got a cracking set of wallies. He does. Ah, he's got a nice set of teeth. Yeah, he's, nice set of teeth. he's a nice lad. Who were your heroes growing up then? Um, being a Rangers fan, it was Ali McCoy to start with. Um, just it. an absolute legend. And then when Gaza came, that was it. Oh. Gaza was the best player. What Amazing. was it about those two players that, were, that had problems with their weight that you related <laughs> I to? I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you're Not always anymore, getting, I'm a bit older than You're that. always getting pelt up for that, aren't you? I was, but I probably treated myself more than I really should have. Aye. Uh, Gone to Bob's ice cream van too much? No, no, uh, KFC, <laughs> believe it or not. Is that right? Do you was, like the uh, supercharger sauce? Loved it. Supercharger okay. sauce. Have you tried no, that? I've not tried that. No. Oh god, this ended up in the paper. Never written. Super jar, supercharger sauce. Right. KFC. Right. right. They put it on the supercharger burger. However, they stopped the supercharger burger being made, but they kept the sauce. <laughs> Every time I went to KFC, I says, "Can I can I get a dip? Uh, the supercharger dip? Uh, no, we can't give you." I goes, "Well, give me it." Uh, I goes, "I'll give you a pound." <laughs> no, 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 it's on the menu. I'll give you. A Container, give me the supercharger sauce. Eventually, gave me it. That's the one of Stevenson. Oh, yeah. Of course, when it came to panto time, <laughs> came to panto time, square one at KFC, where's the supercharger sauce? No, it's not on the menu. So I went off my nut on Twitter. I says, Why can't these people no give me supercharger sauce? Anyway, the next day, KFC came to the pavilion door, umpteen <laughs> bags of chicken. <laughs> Tubs of the supercharger sauce. It's new back on the menu. You can that's buy it that. separate. Thank you, KFC. You know what I mean? Celebrity pool button. That's what you've got to do, but you've yeah, got to cash out or cash in. You're a that. junk food influencer. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love aye, it. Aye. So, so McCoy and Gaza then. Aye. And did you go to the games when you were a kid or were you playing? Yeah, went to all the games with my dad, my granddad. Where did you sit? Stand? Main stand. Main aye. Stand. Yeah. I still go to now. I still go to now. Do Even you? like. Uh, me and a few of my mates go to the uh, European nights. Is it true that oh, yeah. you were in Manchester on the Wednesday? When was it? We played on a Wednesday, and you had them. You had Rangers in the cup final on the Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit uh, chizzy. had organised a friendly against Hearts on the Wednesday. And then we straight because there was quite a gap, wasn't it, between Aye, the Euro we, season and the championship yeah. finishing? And, and yeah, the, they, we had about, I think it was about three final. weeks. So they took us to yeah. Marbella, did a bit of training, and then. 
obviously the Wednesday and then the game was on the Saturday, I'm sure. Aye. It was about seven or eight straight in the car right down to the final. Brilliant. So you, obviously after Rangers getting beat, you must have fancied your chances thinking, here we go, yeah. Because yeah, he's, he's will be done for the weekend. They did a lot of games, so they kind of looked a bit tired and obviously found myself 2-0 doing it half time and mm -hmm. Jizzy just kind of said, listen, just get it everything. Aye, because they might they not go back to two each. Two each after yeah. ten minutes, I think we're going to win this. Big Jim Thompson scored a cracker, didn't he? he did. Sean O'Connor got the other one? Uh, Stevie Tosh. Stevie Tosh? Stevie yeah. Tosh. Big Golden too. Oh, is that so, right? Uh, was he at Manchester or not? <laughs> no, I don't think Tosh was actually. No, I don't think he was. He was the one who attacked the police dog. I, when we came back to get our car, the the place was a riot. Was I know, scary. it's I I was I was at the game and I remember sitting getting texts going, "Are you okay? Is everything yeah. okay?" I was inside the stadium, I had no idea what was happening, mm -hmm. and I just remember walking back for yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. and just being like and just seeing this place Crazy. and just. I went to it, it was yeah. just it was like a bomb site. It was. I saw none of it. I was I was at the game working at the game obviously for yeah. Sky. But, but where were you staying at that night? Did you uh we were staying were back up the road? hotel near the stadium and at that particular time the stadium the area around the stadium made Balanark yeah, in the nineteen sixties right. yeah. seem a little <laughs> bit like Dubai. Yeah. I just don't think so it was awful. I just think Manchester were prepared for that. No, they were on there. They switched off the TV screens, which wasn't that's a good idea. True, I yeah. just don't so heard that. I, this listen, um, take. Um, you were a kid, obviously. Uh, Rangers, <laughs> we, you were a kid, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were all kids. Um, you, were, you were a kid, you signed for Rangers. Yeah. Uh, do you regret signing for Rangers now, given the competition for places? No, 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 definitely not. I think. When I signed, uh, I think at first I was under 12, but then when I got the chance to sign an apprentice, it was amazing. I mean, I travelled the world with Rangers. We went Australia, Chile, Bermuda. Places I seen was fantastic. And then, as I said, the, the players, obviously, as you said, the players they had at that time was hard to get into the, anywhere near it. But was that Advocate era, wasn't it? Advocate, you had uh, Van Bronckhorst, De Boer, Flo. Uh, all the kind of players. But a few did make it through. Stevie Hughes made it through. Mm -hmm. uh, me and him signed the same day. So that was brilliant to see a young Mo boy Ross. getting through a more. Obviously, Bob played, uh, and then eventually you had the uh, big Greg Zay and Burke and all that kind of broken. Who, who was your coaches then at that time? Would that have been like John Bomber. Brown, Bomber, Bomber aye, John McGregor, like? Bomber, scary, aye, aye. aye. Yeah. When you heard your name getting shouted in that corridor, you knew there was something aye. wrong. Aye, but it, to be fair, it was it was a good learning curve because uh, I was one of the boys in the boot room, so. He came down and if there was one bit of dirt, you were staying. It was done. So. so you had all the jobs in those days. Yeah, we had the jobs. Uh, we we they, the still, they don't do that anymore, though, do they? No, not really. So, no. Is that so, wrong? I so they didn't. I loved it. I, I honestly loved it. See, uh, taking care of. I think you had fifteen first team players looking after the other boot and their shin guards and everything. And so what happens? At least a queen of the south. The the squads. Do the, the, the young team no, no do, command? We, no, we do our own kit as well. So you wash it, yeah. Match kit, really? Yeah, no training kit. Training kit. But yeah, how how did that officially stop, David? Do you know that? Do you know why this all of a sudden this you know in terms of the yeah. youngins paying their dues and stuff like that? When did this become a thing? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But back in the days, you had like sort of, sort of things like initiations and all that kind of stuff. But these days, you don't get any of that. What was your initiation? <laughs> I say this one. Uh, it was, <laughs> you know, have you ever been in the away dressing room in Ibrox? Aye, yes. You've got like the slidey floor and the great snack. They would uh, soak it all and then they leg in a wing, yeah, along right in the wall. But you had the grates and all that, so you're cutting your legs and all that. But that was the Good initiation. Lord. So it was a superstar Ranger squad back then, a superstar Celtic squad yep. too. W were there ever get who was it in the squad that you looked at and thought, Oof. Pinch yourself that you were you were breathing the same yeah. air as them. Sometimes you'd had players like obviously injured and in they days playing reserves with you, mm. and uh, you had like short Avalazzi who was unbelievable <laughs> when mm. he he when he signed. I'm sure it was like an international break and he came training with the the kids, the reserve team at the time, and he was watching him was unbelievable, both footed. But probably at that time, wrong the I would say he was he was the best. Cut he, above, just everything. Uh, from his from his diet, which I obviously didn't take <laughs> on at the time, but he's everything. He's professional. Everything was amazing. What do you remember about his knee? His knee I know he had a bad knee, but it didn't Neil, show up in the games because he was. Neil McCann told me he couldn't uh, he couldn't bend his knee. Really? But he couldn't straighten mm. his leg. Probably. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, mm, past the medical, but uh, he, he was oh, something well, else. Yeah, he was amazing. Did these guys look after you? Oh, did you get a nice tip at Christmas time? Oh, cr- uh, Christmas was brilliant. What does that uh, happen? Uh, well, I did back then because we used to um, we used to mix with, cool. with, <laughs> we'd mix with the first team. Um, they take us to the candy bar. Do you remember candy bar? And no, we've never been. Oh, they're in the candy bar. Uh, is that is it's not there anymore? Anyway, no, uh, never heard of it. There's a yeah. different candy bar. There's a candy bar in Sockets, which I frequent every day. Uh, I was in yesterday morning because <laughs> they, day, they day a trifle, but they only do a trifle on a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. Oh, and right. I was in yesterday, David, <laughs> and I'm saying, right, I'm starting a petition because I wanted a trifle yesterday, but obviously I couldn't. I'm going to have to wait till Thursday. I don't know when I'm going with this, but just let you know. <laughs> Candy Bar, if you're listening, please, please, please <laughs> try and become... Please, please just this add the trifles on seven days a week. Dope's so just trying to work out how close Salcott says to them, uh, please. <laughs> but no, they, oh, they were brilliant. As I say, we, we did, we mixed with them for a couple of hours Candy Bar, and then... Uh, Is it empty a crab at country? No, not really. But they'd say to you, like, at the end of the day, like, Come and get your bonus. Like you didn't want to walk up and say, "Listen, I'm leaving you." Right again. So they would give it when you were in the bar. Right. And uh, uh, Tony Vidma, he was the best. Five hundred pound he gave me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in an envelope, but so just stick it in my jacket. Yeah. Way in the toilet, count that. I think That's I walked out about twelve hundred pound that Christmas. Wow. Brilliant. What was your weekly wage back then? I think it was about four hundred pound. I think right, it was. it's a month's, a month's wages. Yeah. I know a week and a half. Yeah, yeah, month's wages in total for that one day. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic! That's and did you go straight to the casino or to KFC? No, no casino. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I actually went out and bought my Christmas presents the next day. Oh well, oh, that's oh, that. Good, uh, good week and away a day. Isn't it, you know, it was in my pocket. I was like. Burning a hole. Dodgy all night. Look, look uh, at my shoulder on yeah. that. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, did it break your heart to leave Rangers? At the time, no, because I knew I wasn't going to break into the. And it came to a point where I had to look after myself, and I got the got the call to say, "Listen, Bobby Williamson, we are like shit hubs." Mm, um, so spoke to Bomber and just says, "Listen, I need, I need to go. Um, maybe on trial somewhere for 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 next year if I'm not going to be staying." He said, "No problem." I went in uh, hubs on the Monday, trained a week, and Bobby offered me a two-year contract. I remember seeing Bobby Williamson at Easter Road when, when you signed. Um, and I said, how's your summer been? And he said, great. He said, I'm telling you, I've signed this boy, Doby from Rangers. He said, what a finisher he is. He said, if I can, if I can get him moving, yeah. this boy could be the, one of the best players in the league. Really? I can remember it as over yesterday, standing yeah. side of the pitch at, at Easter Road. Um, I mean, how did you think you did with that first big step up? Was it quite a culture shock? Yeah, it was, I would say, because you're going into that team with big characters like Grant Brebner. And uh, it's your first kind of first team, uh, everyday environment. And then, but that team was fantastic with the, all the young boys coming through. Uh, was, was that Bruni that team where there was like McManus and Bruni and Whitaker? Sam, and brilliant. Big thing, what do you call him? Uh, Gary O'Connor. So they all <laughs> were emerging at the same time. Uh, so it was a bit. It was like a bam a pot of living. Team, uh, <laughs> mental team, but who was the biggest bam pot? Tammy man, it's definitely. Really, uh, he, really. No, as in Joker wise, right. he was because I travelled with him every day. Sometimes Jenny McKay would take us through as well. So what a laugh would have. Aye. Uh, that was probably. a good Hibs team, wasn't it? No, it wasn't good. It was absolutely terrific. Can Aye. I tell you a quick Tammy McManus story? Yeah. I got a dreadful rollicking from Rod Petrie. Yeah. The Hibernian chairman for many years, now SFA president. Uh, but some, some, something had happened on a night out in Edinburgh. And word did get back to him that I'd been involved. And apparently it was Tam McManus. And apparently, we, back then, maybe we looked a wee you bit similar. Fly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I got a real rollicking. And I had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. So, and in fact, I was in London. I was able to say, no, I was, I was in a studio in London at that time. Right. So, uh, Tam McManus said, thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, was the, what was the highlight of that time at Hibernian? Um, probably the cup run. Yeah, uh, the League Cup. Yeah, we beat, we beat Celtic in the quarters at home. And then my goal came off the bench against Rangers and scored the equaliser. Mm. Um, and obviously w- ended up winning on penalties. Frank De Boer missed the penalty. God, that's what right. a legend. Right. Brilliant, like just being on the pitch with him was, was a and highlight. And did they remember you for your playing days in Rangers? Did they come to the yeah, well, Obviously, Fergie was there, and uh, the wee kit man, Jimmy Bell. Jimmy Bell. I came f- oh, obviously through all the 
And they all can I say to you, well done. Be- Belly came in after the game into our change room and says, fantastic, I'm Did buzzing they? for you. That was uh, amazing. That must have meant quite a it lot. It did mean that meant a lot because Jimmy obviously... I would do some of the home games with Jimmy and do all the kit and all that. Yeah, so he always looked after you. And Aye. I was going to the games anyway, so it was nah, <laughs> as if it was a chore. <laughs> you know I mean? Aye, that sounds brilliant. So it was uh, brilliant. That particular game, when Frank De Boer misses the, the crucial penalty, yeah. there is a photograph. We've got it at Easter Road. Yeah. Do you know the one I mean? Yeah, yeah, it was all running and grabbing each other. Yeah, that whole team running as one to celebrate the, the clinching penalty. Yeah. What a lineup it is. Yeah. The players in that lineup, it's, it's, people ask me who was the best, and I always said at that time for me was Stephen Whitaker because he was absolutely brilliant mm-hmm. and he ended up going back to right back. And but he had two feet technically brilliant, but then you had Kevin Thompson, Scotty Brown, great team. Mm-hmm. It was I think if we'd stayed together, I think I always hear Derek and Gary saying that if they stayed together a couple of more years, they would have won the league. league. Aye. Is that right? Rangers are strong at that time. Yeah. Maybe these days we might mm-hmm. have had a chance, but... How the hell did time. you not win the cup final? I know, it would be Livy. I don't know, I was on the bench. It was Bobby's fault. There's your answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's your <fault>. answer. <laughs> no. Um, Manager. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So did you... You're at Hibs and then were things not working out and you get sent to St. Johnson on loan? Is that yeah. the deal? Moga, Moga come in. Um, right, so so Bobby Williamson left. Mowbray Bobby comes left. in. Yeah. Does he you know take a sniff of you? Or what's what's the deal there? Is he? Yeah, he was he was all right. Take a sniff of you. <laughs> Is that the right free, I hope no, I'm pretty sure Morga didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if he did, he could have complained to HR <laughs> even back <laughs> then. Uh, no, just Morga brought his his own players in. Started bringing a few. Uh, uh, Sam Morrow. He brought Dean Shields in. Some good players, and uh, I just had a chance to go on loan to go and play some games. When. When did you play your last game in the top division in Scotland? It would have been for Hibs, but I, I can't well, so I'll tell you what it was. It was 15 years That's ago crazy. today. Unbelievable. 15 today? years ago today. God's coincidentally. Sake. How the That's hell a fuss. That was Halloween. have you not played <laughs> in Scotland's top division in all that time? Yeah. That is a farce. It's incredible. Yeah, well, I've had, I've had a few chances to go different teams tell us. since I've been at tell us. South but tell us no, no tell no, us I can't tell you come on who was, wanted you let me, th- let me guess let me take a guess Aberdeen I don't, I'm not saying the Dundee United <laughs> Kelly in respect to Queens <laughs> uh, I came back to Queens to stay at Queens <laughs> definitely <laughs> not <laughs> <laughs> um, but I came back to play for Queens I love that loyalty you have for Queens Queen of South uh, I must admit you are an absolute hero down there. You're also a hero in Blackpool. That's why I wanted to wrestle you in Blackpool. Yeah, I would have loved that. For those of you that don't know, Stephen Doby, did I call you or did you call me out? You called me out, I'm sure. I called you out. Yeah. I was doing at Palmerston and I thought you were going to be there. Yeah. I sent a video message that says, how Doby, come on, you up for it? You get your team, I'll get my squad, Blackpool Tower. I know you're a hero down there, let's do it. Right. And we were going to do something, aye, we? we were, aye. The plan was set, Blackpool Tower was sold out, David Tanner, with a couple of thousand folk in this yeah. big, amazing arena. Fucking, the crowd was in fire. What the plan was, for me maybe to get a beat down, but, 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 yeah. the bad guys are peppering all grado, lights go down, lights go up, oh, who's okay. in the ring? The Dobster. That was it. No. What we honey decided on was whether <laughs> I was g- whether we were going to get you to nail me Aye. or to nail the bad guy. But what I would have thought would have been better was for you to initially come out, beat the bad guys, we raise each other's hands, and you turn and fucking ah, poof, low blow me. Great old there we say man, you're, you're making me. But how did it not happen? Uh, I think we drew against Dundee in the cup, so we had to play on the Tuesday night, so couldn't get done for it. Couldn't get done. How gotten is that? That'd have been brilliant. I think about it because I'm ba- Believe and me, you're me, I'm more gutted than you, because <laughs> being a big wrestling fan, that was going to be one of my highlights. <sighs> Especially in Blackpool as well. Aye. Do you, do you, you still live in Blackpool, don't still you? Still live there, yeah. Aye. So what's it like when you walk down the street there? Are you... Uh, you still well kind of recognised or well there's more Glaswegians in Blackpool than there is uh, aye, I can imagine so they don't say no there's aye, they do they all say oh aye. when are you coming back and all that and, uh, but I, I live about 5-10 mile on the road and live them so it's more uh, older peoples so right 
quite a slow pace and you get away with. No seen anybody. See, when you live down there, do you go up and visit the Pleasure Beach <laughs> every week? <laughs> no. Mate, no. I beat the big one's the best, mate. The Pepsi Max, you can't beat that. No, David, no, you've been no, on yeah, it. It's no, when your family the comes. Ghost chain is as tough as I ever got. It's when your family <laughs> comes. Well, that's oh, what you say. All that from the bar, nah. the bar L come down every week. That's no. That's Sleep <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> you, it's normally school holidays mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And I love people Blackpool. phone and saying, oh, I'm doing oh, pleasure beach again. Mm. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you manage to attend? Obviously, you're still playing with Queens, but do you get the chance to go to Blackpool? Like the stadium? The or you, don't, you ever done a half time <laughs> draw or anything like that? No, I, I, well, I'm obsessed got, with half time draws. Yeah, I, I, say, week, is it? Uh, I, got, I got an email uh, to go. <laughs> last Tuesday but because the, school, the schools were off the kids were up the road so. you follow excuses you ain't you I know <laughs> everything good that happens I've always got an excuse Tanner have you ever done a half time draw anywhere <laughs> uh, I did it once here at the Glasgow Speedway when I was very young and I was reading the news on STV Glasgow Speedway what do you mean about the, the speedway, ducks yeah. right. no the Speedway um, the spe- well, Speedway uh, bikes yeah uh, the Ashfield the motorbikes and they did half time draws for that yeah they did some sort of draw <laughs> why'd they there, pick yeah. you it was uh, Jim Dell hunting me. Right. It was like the STV that? Dream Double. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like that. I've had never been asked that before. I'm glad I remembered that. It'd have been weird if I hadn't. <laughs> listen, yeah. um, I'm you listening. Had, you went to St. Johnson. Yeah. Um, who was your manager there? It was, uh, it was John Conley. You remember him? Yeah, great player. Everton. <coughs> he, he signed Johnson. us and uh, didn't really know much about John. And uh, went in first day, chap the door. He said, ah, it was because he was quite old at the time. He yeah. said, oh, come in. I went in. And have you ever seen the, you remember the police academy? When he's put, putting into the cup. That's what he was doing. <laughs> putting <laughs> it Putting it one side of the room into a cup. <laughs> and I went, oh, Gaffer. And he's like, oh, I was like, put it in. He went, oh, Stephen, oh, nice to meet you. And I was it's like, oh. <laughs> funny how these managers have Brilliant. these wee things in it that they do. Aye. You walk in on them. Like, I've aye. never seen anyone do that. I put it in, yeah. Did they do that National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation as well? I thought it was a Some police academy. Yeah, probably, probably all Lith- of these films. Was it Lissard? That is magnificent. That is weird. weird. Did Should you do any other weird stuff? No. It, no, not really. No. What about Holloway? Brilliant. Best, Th- best, best time. Good segue. Weird. Holloway. Aye. Right. Best, best character you Aye. ever meet. Did uh, he have any sort of mad things in his office where you'd walk in and see him? No, in his office, but just every day. Aye. Every day. Like, Constant. If he was going to their team on a Friday, it would it wouldn't be like you know like they've got the boards and all that now and all that. It would be uh, wallpaper that's not been used, <laughs> sticking up with a hatchet. <laughs> no, and then <laughs> but it was a portable. They've got a portable. Have you never been to Blackpool's training ground? No, it's a portable no. they've got. So he's just he's uh, yeah, nailing up a big bit of wallpaper for us doing starts drawing in it and oh, who have they got at left back butcher. <laughs> Better off with Pat Butcher at the back there, and <laughs> just a uh, just a laugh every every day. Aye. But character, what a guy! Did, Absolutely amazing. Did you ever? You always hear the stories of like managers, like maybe if they've played well, they would treat you and take you somewhere. Did yeah. he ever do that? Like, did ever? It's just random, Aye. random stuff. Like, and, like we'd look at, and obviously the the training ground is right close to the beach. Aye. So when the winds hitting and all that, he would look out the window and go, ah, Nah, no, the day lads, come on. We're going bowling, and they just randomly phone up the bowling eye. We're coming. Our mum, we're going for rolls and sausage. Yeah, the whole. See, oh, how brilliant. important is that? I mean, could you imagine? Brilliant. I've already mentioned the one should. Oh, I've already mentioned the one should have done. But could you imagine somebody like Coutinho doing that? You know what I mean? Know that they won enough games for them to go to the uh, to go to go and play bowling. <laughs> but uh, do you know what I mean? Things, we things like that. They must be a big part. Rogers have taken you out for rolls and sausage. No, for rolls and sausage, but he would have like a meal at arrange a meal at night time and. More a sensible route. So like maybe mm. a wee vegan number or something. Uh, he, <laughs> right. was, he was. What he knows about football is unbelievable. Really? You don't really understand some of the things he would teach you. It would Aye. be uh, amazing. Did he, more than any other manager, lift you onto another level, you personally? Tactically wise, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, because, as you, if you've seen me play, I'm not a good defender, I'm not a good tackler, but he. <laughs> We'd put you into positions where you would help the team more. Uh, where Hollywood would give you the confidence, uh, um, the way you pass the ball, like look at Paul Scholes passing the ball, and automatically in your mind you're like, you get it, Paul Scholes. <laughs> Aye. But but you can was different. 
Brendan was tactically it was amazing. What, what did you, what, did, what type of manager did you, did you prefer? Both in different Aye. senses. I knew when I was coming in uh, with Holloway, I was going to have fun, mm-hmm. regardless uh, what what he was putting on. Where Brendan was mayor, I was definitely going to learn something today. The sees a group of players. Who are they fighting for most? A manager that likes a wee bit of a carry on, Aye. or a manager that's you know you're amaz- you're you're learning amazing stuff mm-hmm. for him, but there's no quite that banter. Who do you know as a club overall as a as a as a, as a dressing room? Who did they uh, fight for mayor? Is that a good question? David? Uh, probably the. I think so. The both of them. Aye. I, the difference the difference between them was again example right. Holloway signed a Spanish boy who right. couldn't speak English, <laughs> so he sent him. What I want to do is today we're going to counter attack, so we're going to draw them in and then we're going to hit them. But Holloway's in the middle of the midfield with him and saying, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, a bow and arrow, we pull back and then just as that, clap his horns and Holloway's away up the park. And the boy's stalling and looking at him going, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brendan would, he could speak Spanish. <laughs> oh, gee. That's the difference. Aye, no. aye Brendan. No. Aye. He, I'm sure because he got injured at an early age, Brendan, didn't mm-hmm. he? And he had yeah, to retire. I'm sure he went to Barcelona for a couple of months and watched them training and learnt the language. So right. with the Spanish boys like Angel Rangel and that, he could speak fluent Spanish. So it made it, made it, uh, made it amazing. Uh, no, for me. I don't know. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> okay, so, can you speak English now, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was at Swansea. You played for Brendan. Um, yeah. How did you get yourself to Swansea? Because... Yeah. How many years before that had you been playing in Division 3 yeah. with Dumbarton? Yeah, it was two and a half. It was Jeremy Kay was the manager at Dumbarton and uh, I just had my hernia done. He said, come down and play a few games, get your confidence back, get playing. So he worked with you at Hibs? He worked with me at Hibs. So, um, and then he McCall took me to Queen of South. So played two and a half years there. And really in my last season, I got myself fit. Stayed away for KFC <coughs> and the sauce mm. and that. And, uh, it's hard going, mate. It was. It was it's uh, hard going. trying time. And uh, it was actually uh, Graham Jones. So he was the assistant at Hamilton the year before under Billy Reid. And mm. they would been trying to get me a few seasons to Hamilton. And then he was Roberto Martin as his uh, oh. assistant. So he obviously put him on to me and says, uh, have a look at this boy. I think he could do a job for us. They came and watched, I think, four or five games. I think I scored about eight or nine goals in there. Um, and then that's how it came about. Was that life changing that move to move yeah. from Queen of the South? Definitely. Definitely. How did it change your life? <laughs> Bigger house. <laughs> um, Faster motor. Aye. <laughs> Obviously, um, well, at the time with me and my, my wife, we just found out we were pregnant. So there was a chance of going oh, to Aberdeen. Both of you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a chance of Aberdeen, uh, Dundee United, and Motherwell, and then Swansea came in. And uh, so it was wow. a big jump leaving home to go all the way to. To, to Swansea. You just said you were only going to tell us who was coming in for me. You've just said that was in. Well, 12, I'm 13 years ago. I'm bombing you up. I'm bombing uh, you Yeah, life changing. Life changing. Do you know when Brendan took the job and he replaced Roberto Martinez? Yeah. Do you know who was offered the job before Brendan took it? Get, let, let us guess. Let's let's play a game. Come on. We mentioned them a minute ago. Yeah. Was it Holloway? Reed. Billy Reid? Billy Reid, who was yeah. Hamilton manager at the time, knocked back Swansea. Really? And Brendan Rodgers got it. Yeah. Why, right. did he, why, did he do, why did he do that? I'm not sure. I, don't <laughs> I bet he regrets it now. Yeah. Nobody, yeah, nobody remember What is he doing now? Where is because he? Because that, yeah, I'm just, it was in, is he, in Norway He's or now or the assistant somewhere? manager of Swansea. Oh, he? so he's assistant manager, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. How ironic is that? As David quickly goes to his iPad to <laughs> for reassurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So see how I love speaking about managers, still be right. right. Is there any manager that you played under where you fought and the rest of the locker room fought, this guy's a wank? <laughs> 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 can I say that one? Really? Nah, Is there any other? Those managers you... His current one. No, but that that yeah, just means yeah. no, but that you know what I respect that you're not saying that because you're a good guy. Yeah. But there has been wankers. Ah, definitely, and there's ones that you don't. You go, you're going into training field going. Aye, and does it affect your play? Definitely, because as in any job, you want to be coming and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Like, and to be lucky enough to play football every day, it's uh. So if you're going in and someone's training isn't good and you're not enjoying it, then. 
It's going to affect how it's you play the going part, to affect man. you because you know when it, it's like anybody turn up and they don't like their boss. In any job. They don't like their boss. Boss. All right. Boss. So the, the bus. <laughs> God, fuck you talking about. <laughs> well, so let's let's talk about the South. Let's go back to the first. Spell Great club. Because yeah. you got all the way to the Scottish Cup final. Yeah. Which was the Dune Hamer's first cup final. Yeah. So it was a massive, massive thing. And you weren't necessarily great shakes in the championship at the time. So no. what was it that just clicked into place that year? I think probably the teams we played against as well. I think we played the Lifco Rose, the stuff like that. When we got um, to the, the quarters. Bus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when we <laughs> got to the quarters, we, it was Dundee at home. Wait, um, wait, wait, league is in at this point? Well, it was, the was, the I think it was Division 1 at the time. Yeah, right. that, that so was championship. The championship. Yeah. It was championship. Um, I remember the Dundee game because it was a famous McCann. goal in that, wasn't Ryan it? Ryan McCann, 84 yeah, yards. Yeah. On the right hand side. Seriously? Yeah. Is that on YouTube? 84 yards, yeah. Is that on YouTube? Yeah. I'm going to look that way. It, oh, yeah, it will be on YouTube, look. bye. Um, but the feeling after that was amazing. What was the guy's name? Ryan McCann. Ryan McCann. Ex Celtic? Yeah, Ex Celtic. Yeah, Ryan McCann, 84 yards is the first result. Ryan McCann. Funny boy. What a funny boy. And here he comes, and it's a corner kick. Was that a corner? Oh. It's a free kick for Dundee. I, I actually think it should have been a free kick on the. Here coming out, this one. So, so it's what? an attack by Dundee. It looks like a free kick there. Ryan McCann picks no up way, from man. halfway no inside no his own half. Where's the goalie? He was up for a corner uh, for the free kick last minute. Oh, was what? it last minute? What's the What's the goalie doing, Tam? What's the goalie doing? <laughs> <laughs> what's he doing? What, what hey. a goal! Anyway, <laughs> listen. Tell us about the cup. The how you got to the cup final. Then, so you beat Dundee. Yeah. And then the next game is Hamden Park. I did Aberdeen. it live. An absolute classic. Yeah. And I don't think Jimmy Calder would ever recover from this as Aberdeen no. manager. So tell us about that. No, game. I think uh, first half was unbelievable. Um, I think it was they scored, we scored, and it just kept going. Mm -hmm. I I got injured after about twenty minutes. Jackie McNamara smashed me out in the line. Mm -hmm. Had to come off. Did Devastated. Shit bag. Yeah, uh, yeah, was. <laughs> <laughs> I think my knee had all swollen up, but it was all right later on when I was dancing. Superb. Victorious. And then we ended up winning. Brilliant. Four three. Four three. Unbelievable. Uh, it was unbelievable. Um, after that, I've got a wee story. Can I insert one of my own stories here? I feel David, like I'm being egotistical. David, listen, look, this is what it's all about. You're known Sky now. You're <laughs> sitting here. You want to come in with your stories, David. You better, you better. And that's why I did. Well, I, I was on Sky then. Right. <laughs> and I, you were going to Spain for a kind of yeah, training our, break. Our bear, yeah. <laughs> Who was this way? Uh, Queen of Queens? the South. Queen's, Queens, uh, right. Queens. Right. Ahead of playing Rangers in the Cup final. Right. And I said to the producer at the time, um, Scott Melvin, I said, Scott, I've got a great idea. Why don't we get a camcorder and give it to one of the Queen of the South Brilliant. players and they can do the video diary thing. Yeah. And I want to, I've been wanting to do that for years, never ever um, got the chance to. So, oh, that's a great idea. So at great expense, I think it cost about eight grand or something to hire it for the sort of 10 days you were away. Yeah. We got this camcorder in <laughs> and we got it driven down uh, to training at Glasgow Green where yeah. you're training uh, literally Aye. half a mile from where we are now and we gave it to the guy who scored the best goal in the Hamden game Sean O'Connor yeah. scored an absolute uh, screamer screamer and so Big Sean get trained how to use it and but fantastic so anyway you got back a few days before the cup final and I thought right Sean O'Connor's going to phone me now. Yeah. I'll kind of wait to see this. There'll be, there'll be carnage and all that. All, be, all, all this sort of banter. Anyway, um, eventually, I two days later, I phoned him up and said, Sean, how did you get on? And he said, I forgot it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't remember any cameras being about. He left it in the house. Did he they? forgot all about that it. That doesn't surprise me. And, and you had paid that eight grand to, for it to be hired out. Yeah. And Gordon Chisholm... <laughs> Uh, I phoned the manager Gordon Chisholm for a chat yeah, and, uh, a and I, I knew Gordon really well um, my uh, family are related to oh. his and uh, he's from Bishop Briggs big name there you go mm. right. Toodles, then. and he said Sean O'Connor you give it to him <laughs> mm. he's not the sharpest tool aye, in the aye. box yeah, is that aye. fair? aye 
That's actually being Sh- kind to Sean. Sh- <laughs> Sh- should you have given it to Dobie? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no at that time. I remember interviewing you before that game and uh, you were unwrapping a parcel that arrived from your boot manufacturer. Right. And uh, you had the snidiest boots I think I've ever seen for that. Form. Oh, what were they? Or orange or I'd, silver or something. Can I tell you? You know what had happened was, uh, obviously being a big Rangers fan, we... Uh, <laughs> We, Here we, go. we won the quarter final and then uh, Celtic were playing Aberdeen in the, the, qu- the quarters. So we were playing whoever won that. Yeah. And uh, so I think it got back to replay, back to Parkhead. And I thought, oh, definitely Celtic going to win, right? I'm getting these boots made up. So right. I got the blue and the red and the white right. boots. <laughs> and <Aye>. Aberdeen won. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a right idiot. <laughs> 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 Who made them? Who kind of boots a bootmaker? Oh, you know, you send away to Nike and you can oh. customise your own boots. Right, so you, they didn't pay for you to wear them or anything no, like that? No. No. Have you no. ever had that in your career? Have you ever had a sponsorship with boots? Uh, boots chemist. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were at Swansea, we got Nikes. Right. Aye. Uh, and was it, was it just a matter of... Just phone up, so yeah. Aye. Even uh, trackies, yeah. not that? No. Can you... No, no. I was going to see if you can get my discount. No. no. I've got a wee guy that gets me 40% half in night. He's a wee... Have you, can I get fun. it? Shout out to... What is it? Can I get it? Uh, Anyone, mate, just give me the order. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. It's a wrestling fan. Get him on watch. His name's David. Great guy. Fat, I better not put his name in just in case Nike hold on. But aye, yeah. I've not sent him an order in a wee while. Aye, 40% half. That's why I was decked out in Nike. Uh, Fucking great day, ain't Brilliant, aye. There's many knocked off sweets from the uh, ice cream vans. Uh, uh, we'll get you the lot. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like a kind of fencing operation, this, isn't it? Res- uh, reselling uh, stolen goods. Um, <laughs> you're back at Queen of the South now. You're back. Yeah, back. You're back. The return of the prodigal. Why did you choose there? Because, you know, it, it strikes me, with respect to the championship, you could still be playing in uh, the Scottish Premiership. There's yeah. a good chippy half a mile for the park. There is that, aye. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Is it called the pa- is it called the Palmerston Cafe or something? Aye, like? that's right. Aye. Is that the one I'm talking aye, about? Aye. Oh, shout out to the bad boys. Brilliant. Oh, t- you, actually, you I think my dad was there last night. Was he? The game, was aye. he? Was oh, he? Do you go there quite a lot after games? I don't because right. I don't eat that kind of thing anymore. Ah, your body's a temple. But, but sorry uh, for interrupting. There, just to uh, put all that cafe. That's a great eyes. stat, though, isn't it? <laughs> 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 this is why this is the best football podcast. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you go when you went back <laughs> uh, why not the Premiership why Queen of the South um, I just when I left Queen's they did so much for me yeah. um, as I said I was it was sort of my last chance at the time Ian McCall gave me and then Chizzy took over and, and uh, always said I would come back at some point mm-hmm. and uh, I was at Bolton the year before we were, we were in administration and who was th- in charge at Bolton at the time uh, Sorry, Lenny was Lenny it Lenny was manager, I? I. how's you going Aye, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't play me as much as I would have liked, but mm. yeah, okay. it was tough Lenny, times. Do you hope that when it, Lenny, your old gaffer, wins the league this year? Definitely not. <laughs> 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 no, hey, it's going to be a close one. But, Aye, uh, it's going to be a close one. Hope listen, I must close. tell you, a good, good friend of mine, Jim Melrose, who was chief scout at Bolton when Lenny was there, ex-Celtic, Park Thistle. That rings a bell, Jim Melrose. You met him recently at a golf day. I did, I, I. Back on site golf day. Ah, that's right. I spoke to him today. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Great, great knowledge of the game. Uh, and I'm sure you'll agree with this. Right. And I said, Stephen Doby's coming in today. And he said, David, he's the best finisher I have ever seen. Oh, that's a good compliment. Now, Jim, when he played at the party, <laughs> when, he, when he moved on, he was replaced yeah. by Mo Johnson from the reserves. Yeah. He signed for Leicester. His first strike partner there was Gary Lineker. So, it's, you know, played with That's Brian McClare yeah. and Mo at Celtic. He knows what he's talking about here. But he yeah. said he used to go and watch you in training at Bolton and he said your finishing was genuinely second to none. Mobility? Yeah. Not, not quite not there. The quickest. But would you agree with that summary? Does that, does that sound like yourself? Uh, yeah, probably more renowned for my, for my finishing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was, when I was at Rangers as a kid, I would work on it. Mm-hmm. Um, was there a striking coach there? <laughs> no, there wasn't. So you just take a bag of balls out, I'd stick two poles either side of the goalpost and just side foot, side right. foot and just repetition. Mm-hmm. That is a great compliment button. Oh, oh, amazing. Do you amazing. play, do you have any, um, how did I say this? How much did uh, Billy Dodds being your, the striking uh, coach? Definitely. Himself, did, did, did that help you? He, he got my, I would probably say my confidence back and myself really? finishing wise. Um, and that was probably like yeah. would, would, well, how did you get your confidence back? How? Just 
continually hitting the target, I would say. I, I think just makes in, perfect. Well, I'd say to the kids in the corner south, no slashing at it, no smashing it. Just take your because time. I take your time because then in the game, you have that wee extra yard and you'll just naturally do it. It interests me as a fan looking out to the inside what a striking coach does. Yeah. You know, Billy Dodge <laughs> comes in to Queen of South. What is it that he's learning you? What is he doing? Is he just like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I know there's a lot to uh, being a striker, but it just it interests me. I'd, I I want to know what, what is, th- how does how does these sessions go? What happens? I think it it depends on who it is. Like Dodgy obviously was similar build to me, similar height. Aye. So he had to make space in the box, and he was obviously a brilliant finisher, Dodgy himself. So mm-hmm. wee bits like that, when the balls are in certain positions, what where I should be going and what I should be doing, and a lot of times he kind of don't. Uh, uh, put into me that when the ball's at different areas I'm always scanning to see where the defenders are so Aye, always looking. when the ball's coming in I'm not just looking at the defender I'm looking at where my other striking partner is mm. so if you when you see me play I generally it's wee <coughs> ones coming into me and I'm running the corner and going for one twos oh. and to try and be that wee bit quicker than the big stupid defenders talking of striking partners uh, partners talking of striking partners what about last year's striking partner Lyndon Dykes in, yeah. Oh, yeah. aye. Yeah. He's going on. He was a good player for me. Yeah. It was sort of the same as everybody says when I say it, people Sean O'Connor at the time. Uh-huh. Tall but guy. Legs did the too. running, <laughs> did the bashing, battling people yeah. for me. And then I just try and sniff around about him. What about him for Scotland? Is that a bit early? Yeah, but over the, the top? Well, why not? If Shanks can, and he's doing it in a league blow, I could. Uh, and we're crying out for a, a striker, aren't we? Do you see yourself? A wee bit of yourself in Lauren Shankland? Yeah, uh, the story reminds yeah, me of you. Yeah, probably the story. It does. Yeah, I think I would probably say he's more of a penalty box striker, mm. getting uh, crosses and headers and that, where I'm, I like to build the play outside that. Were you surprised that he went to Dundee United? No, not really. Obviously, I've seen uh, there was a few teams and Swansea was one of the ti- one of the teams, so mm. when we played against there, I had a, a wee chat with him. Oh, did you? Yeah, uh, because... Obviously, I'm good pals with McCall, so and mm. that was coming at the time. So when I spoke to Collie, yeah, she tell me to put 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 so put yeah. I leave stay at Palm Affa. Stay at Swansea. So he could he could have gone to Swansea and and sought your advice. Yeah, obviously, uh, um, and the but Dundee United, massive club where obviously they shouldn't be in the, the division they're in. So Lawrence gone there. Uh, he's I think he scored fourteen, fifteen goals already. So. He's made a difference week. for them, yeah. However, let's talk about the big game a couple of weeks ago. Dobie versus Shankland. Wow, there was only one. I, one I don't know, I don't know why people that. keep uh, putting me against Lawrence. Do you know what because I mean? Because you are prolific goal scorers yeah. and super footballers in a division uh, where you stand out head and shoulders above the rest. Yeah. Is the honest answer. Was this in your nut in this? And that's a good comparison. thing. Yeah, th- as I say, that uh, we're not similar players. No, you're not. I think I but think we probably play good together. Right. So are the um, and Ian McCall said that as well. Four two would be great together. <laughs> I think I'm past that, but um, but <laughs> don't need a third. David Weir played for Scotland at forty. Yeah, mm. yeah, but David Weir was uh, he was a class above, mm. even can, at his age. Can I also you remember how David Tanner uh, about eight minutes ago you you um, gave us a story. Also want to tell a story. Um, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Can you make it short for me? Because I was mine's a little short on yours. I, I'll fucking tell I you. Have to, I was boring myself. <laughs> <laughs> in two thousand and nine, mm. before I'd ever graced the screens, <laughs> I'm in uh, Brayhead Shopping Centre. <laughs> I seen a guy sitting in a chair himself, and I went, "That guy's a football player." <laughs> and I went up and I sat down. and I went, "You a football player?" <laughs> you went exactly then you like went, that. Then you went kinda. <laughs> 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 and I goes right who do you Modest. play for? I goes right you play for who do you play for St Man, no Aberdeen no Hibs no I didn't oh, fuck up I'm taking the stairs right Aberdeen no St Man, no Rafe Rovers no who are you <laughs> it was like uh, that wasn't uh, it uh, was just said, said my name and uh, told you who I played for and you went all right, mate. And just walked, walked away. 
did you think this laddie's a bit a bit soft in the heat? But it's uh, funny how but he can remember right. it. He can aye. remember it, didn't you? Aye. 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 Comical. Are you a football player? <laughs> Kinda. St. Man? No. Aberdeen? No. <laughs> can it look ten Class. years on? Can I formally apologise on behalf of the football staff <laughs> podcast? We're, we're I think that's a great that was story. Class. Aye. Aye. No. Great story, that is, man. That is terrific. Tell me this: um, it's your second spell. How long can you go on for? Um, I'm definitely going to play next year. Are you? I'm hoping. I've not had an offer yet for Queen's South. I'm hoping it'll be Queen's oh, South. Oh, yeah. Um, but. I think it's a long time retired, so yeah. if my legs are still going, then I'll yeah. definitely be playing next year. Oh, that's terrific. What if Gerard comes in for you? Oh, that's a close one. <laughs> <laughs> aye, probably Rangers, <laughs> aye. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you've, you've, you've been at Queen's so long, I mean, they should make a, they should cast a statue in your honour, should yeah, they not? Yeah, I know, it was a bit time. Nah, that what, an honor, me, what an honour, what an honour. Well, that's what I'm saying. But, I completely respect... The way you your loyalty to Aye. that club, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. You don't get enough of it Aye. in football, David. You know, I agree. I think his, you know, absolute dedication to that that club. Regarding the regarding the statue, I mean. I mean, the, the statue's other, a bit fucking forward. The other two <laughs> legends on it have obviously passed away, and their family is a great honour, but. So For me, Alan Ball, Alan Ball and Billy Houston. Oh yeah. Um, but for me, we've only been thirty six and having a statue outside a, a club that I love. And that yeah. was, what more do you need? What and mayor? how do you feel? How did you feel when you saw the statue at first? Yeah, it was emotional because obviously I've got my kids there on the unveiling, and I'm. D- does it look like you? Side view, there's uh, it's a it's wooden, it's wooden, so it's obviously a the, wooden statue, the, the beards all carved and all that. And uh, I went and seen it last night actually. And it's oh, is, it, is it not been unveiled yet? Uh, it's been unveiled. Oh, has it been unveiled? I just go every home game, I go and look at <laughs> it. Just for the fucking invite, <laughs> just for the invite. Be honest, have you taken a selfie with it? Oh, aye, straight away, yeah, straight away. It's good, lad. But what a my, buzz, though. Oh, amazing. I, like, my mum and dad were at the game, so getting photos with them with it, it's just get. What more can you ask for? Brilliant. Is that right there? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Has it got a cone that's it? That's it. No, yeah. Is that right there? What about you? You've got wood there. That's it there, aye. Well, is that you front on? Aye, front on. Aye. Is that you? Aye. <laughs> it's made a wood grade, though. Come on, what more you want? <laughs> Would you? I lost it. You know, I almost look for, as if you're a player for the... Oh, no, that's a shame. Can I say that, the guy that's made that? Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> the, the Why should he pay for that? The guy, the guy made it was for Wales, so I'm not Why sure if he was a Cardiff fan. Why should he take it? What? What did you say there? He was for Wales, the guy that carved it. I so I don't know if he was a Cardiff fan or a Swansea fan. Why should he make it that, but I fucking... Why should he take for it, but I don't. <laughs> that's terrible saying that, we can't say that. But that is fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, like, all the statues like Beckham and all that, don't, they don't? No, really listen, like I'm carrying on. Cut out, I can't say it's that. It's much better than the one of Ronaldo. At that's uh, right. oh, no, no, That's no, been no, no. covered up. I know. It's covered I'm up. I'm about that. I tell you what, I, I've met a lot of people who've had statues. <laughs> Fergie, Best, Dennis Law, Eusebio, all of these guys. Yeah. Um, and it's such a thrill to meet someone who has been so special. So... To have it. That's what I'm saying. Ah, that's a different you know, level of players that are going through there, David. They were, they were, they were half decent. Nah, they, they, were they never played for the Queens, though. Yeah. No, I just Unfortunately for, for them. How much money are you going to bank? <laughs> 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 that's a no comment there, Grado. <laughs> oh, my. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. That's all right. Again, I have to apologise on behalf of everyone here <laughs> at Football Draft. Um, tell me this what's your pre-match meal what was your pre-match meal at the beginning of your career and what is it now you've been mocking me for too long asking me questions last time I was at Queen's we'd have just been maybe a KFC on the way yeah. on the way McDonald's yeah <laughs> Yep. You're getting his own? No, I'm being serious. Yeah. Is that, but, but is that what they tell you today, the nutritionist? They tell you you get <laughs> <a point? laughs> No, no. Uh, wow. No, it's, it's different days back then. Yeah. I was yeah. in what a different frame now? of mind. Now I'm um, generally salmon, rice, broccoli. 
Wow. Sweet potato. I know it is quite yeah. boring no, now, but, but but different now. I've got kids and mm-hmm. uh, and they obviously eat healthy with me as well. What about the biggest game of your career? What was that? The best game? Biggest Swansea Reading Cup final. Mm-hmm. Um, Ninety thousand family there. Set up. One. Ninety thousand of your family. Ninety thousand for Blarock. Right. We're all doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what I guess he's had to pay for set up one Scotty Sinclair scored and then I scored straight after it best feeling I'll ever have amazing what about the best player that you've ever played against against best uh, Aguero Aguero aye. definitely Aguero. God, that's funny how you got into it. I mean you think you were playing aye. with Queen of the South aye and then how long was I it after that for aye uh, two years or something after that, three years. Do you know what I mean? Tell it's crazy, about, isn't it? Tell us about Scotty Sinclair because, believe it or not, you two, there are there is another Scottish Premiership team in Glasgow. Yeah. Um, how good is Scotty Sinclair? Yeah. I, God, after that just, big fucking gap, you, you expect a better question? <laughs> you, you sounded like uh, Jim White. With Brian Loudrop, <laughs> just how good is Scott Skins <laughs> Sinclair? <laughs> Why are you so good? <laughs> he is. He's a very good player, Scott. He looks after himself. Um, he came with Swansea. Obviously, Brendan knew him, so mm-hmm. got him flying, and and then brought me Celtic. I'm flying again, but brilliant. He's not really playing much to now, but I'm just, doesn't take away his Scott's ability. Is he's there good. any players, Doby, where you've been in a team <laughs> and you've went us. and you've went? Why is this guy playing football? How does he get my scat contract? There's <laughs> an end to being that, that you know what I mean? There's an oh, end to being that rotten. I'll tell you, 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 get, you get players that uh, you train with every day and you go, he's terrible. Murder. Uh, but you're not obviously telling him that. <laughs> but then you come to the game and he's brilliant. Aye. I played with uh, Jason Yule, you remember him? Yeah. With Charlton, remember? They went, they were six or seven from Aye, the league. That's right. Scoring goals for fun. Turned up, played for Blackpool. Couldn't they control the ball. No. I was saying. I, I remember watching him on match of the day, scoring goals yeah. against Arsenal and United and everything. And you train with him, you're like, oh, it's, Aye. It's not, it's what was the problem? Um, they said that your legs have gone, but had his feet gone? Uh, no, I, 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 Jason had just got to that age where he yeah. wasn't playing much. And was the same. Who was the best player you played with then? Um, played with? Um, Wilfred Zaha. Yeah. Unbelievable. Better than Charlie Adam. Oh, I, I, Do you know, it's, Wilfred's skills are unbelievable. It's, it's funny you're saying the thing about Charlie Adam. The reason why I asked that question was in Gerard's book, he totally buries Charlie Adam right. and says, you know, the day that Charlie <coughs> Adam turned up at Liverpool, he went, who the fuck have we signed? Aye. And he, you know, he nailed him in his mm-hmm. book. And I had to laugh a couple of weeks ago when Gerard came on with the Rangers tap. It Aye. was Charlie Adam and Gerard that got brought home at the same time. <laughs> and I'm a, going, uh, that must oh, be an awkward situation. Awkward, Do you know what I mean? Because Aye. he totally went to town, Gerard, uh, on Charlie Adam. Charlie was good. For, especially for Blackpool but that was Ian Holloway done brilliant for him what, really? yeah, what, what was it that worked because Walter Smith famously wasn't yeah. so keen on him I think the the sort of 90 yard Hollywood passes yeah. that if it didn't work out every time yeah. they didn't bother at Rangers Gaffer just let him do it mm-hmm. uh, the team we had there there was a lot of Scottish boys Stephen Craney mm-hmm. but the way they we were tipped for relegation that year we ended up winning promotion so the way the Gaffer got all the players playing like, like Charlie you, sometimes you just find sort of like with me with Queen of South you find a place that you enjoy yeah. coming every day and loving and Charlie was fantastic yeah it was terrific <laughs> before we before we ask you our last question I'd like to put it to the the audience and to you as well that there should be a statue of Grado yeah in the top end of Stevenson Definitely. maybe the bottom end too maybe the one in the middle why not no do you know what um, there's so if, it was, if, if it was set up the top end it get knocked down but <laughs> there's Stevenson Cross, there's a Cross Keys pub, right? Uh, and there's a wee bus stop there, and there's a nice wee garden area just <laughs> behind there. Aye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the problem is, Gordon Smith's also, also for Stevenson. You know, aye, Gordon Smith. Aye. Aye. I think we'd need to maybe can I see the big use, use of put the three men up. I aye. think we'd maybe need to do that. Also, Malorca Lee, the DJ for Ultrasonic. Do you aye. remember him? No. Mm. Anyway, the three years are for Stevenson. Aye. And also, uh, what do you call him, Rob Fulton, the, da- the darts player. Oh, aye. He's for Steve. Right. That's got to be a 
fucking. It's a lot of metal. Uh, <laughs> uh, Correct. Uh, so, but we'll just David Gordon Smith then. Uh, aye, no, aye, so you are. <laughs> uh, but thanks for that, David. Uh, uh, that'd be a decent. That would be good, and I would invite you to the unveiling of that. I would definitely be there. So thanks very much. Aye. But we need to get this wrestling deal sorted out, though. Definitely. Because I know your Wayne's love the wrestling as well, didn't they? Did they enjoy aye, that night? Love it. They enjoy love that it. night. Aye, they're brilliant. Where, where, where do you think we should have it? Do you think we should have it in Blackpool or somewhere up here? Anywhere you want, mate. I told you on that <laughs> when we did the video. Anytime. Aye, aye. Would you like to come back here and do wrestling? Daft? Oh, I'd love it, aye. especially if the likes of, especially if Chris Jericho or whatever was aye, coming. Jericho aye. was on last week. Aye. Jericho was on last week. <laughs> David Tanner's off. <laughs> hey, is that way? Is that sorry? Yeah. Is that way? <laughs> yes. Stephen, thanks very much. It's thanks been an honour to have me. you on it. I've, Brilliant. I've, <clears throat> Stephen, thanks very much. It's been an absolute honour to have you on the show. I've always wanted to join you on it for the very start, so it's good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, sorry about Tanner, he's on I'm a bit. Sorry. <laughs>Oh, David Boy, the suntan yeah. superman. <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed. I've my thoro- tan fell off. No, yesterday. no, no, you're still out of yeah. five. Well, I just, um, I've been home for long enough. It's by, by how cold was it this week? I'll tell you, I'm waking up in the mornings, David, and I'm having to come, I'm having to stick on the blows, early doors. I'll tell you, the night's a fair drawing in. <laughs> My dad says that as soon as the clock change. Anyway, if you've enjoyed Football Daft, then you can go and review online. Give us your reviews. Be honest. Let us know. I know that... Uh, were punters gushing in their praise of me? Yes, they were. They loved you. And uh, But I've got a review here from Michelle. Love you, Grado. Started listening to the podcast to help drift off to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but need to listen to yours during the day because all a day is laugh. Oh, that's lovely, Michelle. That comes from lovely Michelle. What did Michelle say about me? Absolutely fuck all. Enough, enough. Michelle, I By hope the way, <laughs> a guy did tweet me and say, uh, so funny he almost drove his car off the road. There you go. That wasn't me, it was you. It's been funny, obviously, but uh, I thought it was really nice. Oh, no, that was really nice, aye. Usually when I'm on the telly, people <laughs> go in their car and drive off <laughs> mountaintops. <laughs> that was quite nice. No, David, but deliberately. You were brilliant on the telly. I can't wait till you get reemployed. <laughs> Until that happens, I'll be here. Can I come back next week? Yeah. Aye. As long as you get somebody get like that. See that? Who are you guest? I was literally starstruck, David. I've I I, I love I love, I love all Spook Evans. Love him. Love him. Love him. Oh, I was that was great. I, I thought it was going really well until you called him Spook. Do you yeah. think that was a wee bit of order? I thought it was disgusting to be honest with you. But it's just what he needs. He deserved it, the old goat. Hugh is 70 in a couple of weeks. See how goat do you mean greatest of all time? Exactly. And by the way, how good was Stephen Doby? Oh. It's not every day you get a chance to meet someone who has had... A statue? Mm. He's got a statue, mate. Yeah. Mate, he's got a statue. Well, so they say. I mean, it was built with wood. <laughs> it's really nice, though. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. It just reminds me, the three of them there, of Bananarama. More than it does Alan Ball... It was, it was a fun one. <laughs> Can't remember. Uh, it was Bill Gulhuli. Gulhuli. Oh, yeah. uh, and I'm Big Dobbs. Aye. When, uh, whenever I'm, whenever I'm passing by, uh, where did Queen of South play again? Dumb fries. Dumb fries. Whenever, whenever I'm going through Dumb fries, I'm going to go by there and take a nice wee selfie and a nice wee wreath. He's no DJ, but I mean, he's <laughs> <laughs> better, right? And then go to the chip shop. Yes, the Palmerston Cafe. Superb fish supper. Can I can't believe we get away with this. Oh, can you believe it? That's why it's called Fit by Daft. David, you've been football. Grado, you've been daft. It's yourself! Remember that?